Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Devora. So here we have Jen, the fucking body painter. <laughs> Jen been called the fucking part. Well, yeah. Well, it's better than Mama Jen, right? Because I know you don't like oh, that. Oh, hell yeah. Um, but no. So before you take it away and just take the stage, I wanted to say how the first because we talked about it. I think maybe in the mom's episode, how I first met you. Did we? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, we touched on it. But I think it's important to bring up because it's it's so funny because I feel like I have such a bad memory. But it's something that I just always it always stuck with me and I never forgot it. And I feel like one, because I thought you were so like breathtakingly beautiful. And I felt the same way about you, okay, but I was, even though you were a little girl. I know I was young, like and I'm sure my teeth were crooked. No, like, I, I think this is when I had teeth. when I had braces. No. no, I had one tooth that was like up. In I my didn't gums. notice that. I think I noticed just your just everything as okay. a whole. Well, beautiful little girl. Thank you. So first time we met was at a, it was like a small restaurant right mm-hmm. in our little town mm-hmm. so i didn't even meet you as my best friend's mom and i think i went with my mom to was she there for your show or, was yeah. she, or not show but your thing but was yeah it, okay she was there so she was going to see you body paint was that what you were doing yep, or you I was had having people. a charity body painting okay there. yeah so i went with her because i'd always go with her because she'd always hear bands play there too at this like mm-hmm. small restaurant Oh, and, that's what she was there for. She was there to see her brother. And you were upstairs, right? Or somewhere else? And I else? was upstairs okay. having the event. Right. And, and then I re- she saw there was an event going on. Yeah. So I went to the bathroom, mm-hmm. right? And I came downstairs to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And, and I saw you. And what did I, it was I just, just you and I in the bathroom, which was crazy. It felt like nobody was there. Yeah. And I was putting my lip gloss on. And you come out of the stall and you're like, you're pretty. Well, I like can't believe I said that. I feel like I'd be nervous. You know how like young kids are like nervous? Yeah, you were just like, you're so pretty. And I was looked at you and I went, thank you. So are you. And then I said, wait, where's your mom? Why are you here by yourself? Mm-hmm. Like, Because I was young. I had to Yeah, have been- usually I would go with my kids to the bathroom at that age. <laughs> I had to have been- I don't know what, 10 or 12? I was going to say 10 or 11. Yeah, I was young. And you're like, my mom's here. Mm -hmm. And we walk out and you point to her and it's Roxanne. And I'm like, yeah, that's your mom. Yeah. So our moms already knew each other from high school. And then, yes, that was a small world. But I met you as a kid, literally a kid, and met you as a body painter, like a really hot, beautiful body painter. That's crazy. So and then it wasn't until years later, obviously, that then And then you didn't even know, like Claudia and you weren't even friends yet. So yeah. And I'm wondering, I mean, I once again, like I said, have the worst memory, but it makes me wonder if when Claudia and I became friends, if I remembered the two, like, oh, I I met her at. I don't think so, because I don't think 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 you met me. I think you met me first, then you met her and you hung out with her before coming to my house and before me dropping her at yours. It only started probably connecting when- But do you think I remember that you were who I saw? I feel probably like I, not. I feel like I didn't. Probably not. Yeah, like I feel like I didn't put kids the two together. Make, yeah, kids no. aren't like that. Like, I mean, they're intuitive. Yeah. And they're very smart, but they don't- right. They're not like that Like, yeah. aware. Right. So I feel like on social media, that's pretty much what you're known for, for the most part. Now, maybe more cats. But for a while, recently, cats. yeah, it was your your talent and being a body painter. And I feel like no one in our state does what you do. Honestly, nope. anywhere, I feel like no one does what you do. Nope. That I've ever seen. Like, I feel uh, like people in the state, they try to. Right. Yeah. They try to. But no one can compare. Now, after COVID, I really don't think there's too many of them that are doing it. I, no. I survived it. Right. So somehow, some way. And it's just crazy because you are yeah. so talented. And I feel like not only in just body paint, but in art and in so many other Thank things, you. like in drawing. And I just think it would be amazing for you to tell us how, mm. you know, your journey through it, but also where you were before it, how you got into it. And then honestly, just where you are now, because yeah. you've honestly, changed so, so much. I ha- oh my God. Even I- just how I've known you, like yeah. how I first met you and then being friends with Claudia, how I saw yeah. you then. And like, it's just so- I feel like I've had so many different lives already. <laughs> it's crazy. And even through the process, yeah. it's like, we became friends. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so many. Very good friends. Yes. That actually, this is my book. And and hopefully my soon to be mother-in-law. This is for you. <laughs> so yeah. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Brandon. Yeah. M- mom, best friend. Thank yeah. you. That's what I wrote in there, basically. Amazing yeah. friend and like a daughter to me. So this, crazy. you wrote this book, right? I wrote this book. So okay. this is this all about your. It's crazy because this book didn't. I kept dreaming of this book. You know, I'm a big manifester 
And I think like, if you think hard enough and long enough, you're like magic, you can make things happen in your life. The book was one of the things that I, before, and I had no money and no nothing. I was like, I'm going to have a book. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. Right. <laughs> And the way it came about was just like, it just kept coming back in my head. You know, a lot of people write things down and they're like, you should write things down. I don't write things down. Yeah. I think them in my head over and over and over until they're like branded in my brain. Right. And then they come to real life and happen. So the book was just, if you look in the beginning of the book, uh, hopefully you'll read it. I will. I will. Or every, You know, every book you've gotten me. Remember when You've you got read. it? I have. I okay, really good. have. And I read this, them right you'll away. You probably know all of this stuff yeah. for the most part because uh, it's my backstory. So when I wrote this book, I was so passionate about, because I was in what was happening. It was such a struggle for me. Everything was such a struggle. And so I go back from the time that I was a baby and I remember seeing my mom painting on walls. And that's where I kind of like got my artistic talent. Right. And vision from is my mom painting. She's the painter. And mm-hmm. my dad was like the businessman in the See, the, I never one. I never knew that about your mom. Yeah. Like I knew about the makeup, amazing but artist, I didn't know that she's an amazing artist. Actually, yeah. she was better than any of my school teachers. Mm-hmm. And she was one of those people that, you know, she was hard on me with correcting my artwork. And she would correct it and I get mad. Yeah. You know, if you just separated their eyes a little bit more and did this, I was like and I would get so angry because I'm like, why can't you just say it's great? Right. Because it's not. Yeah. <laughs> what with, you know, Kennedy, I do both, but she, Kennedy's amazing. Yeah. So I don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. But I remember how that made me feel. I was like, eh. So it just made me a better artist. And then my dad would always be like, so growing up, I would always try, oh. Here she is. I knew, I was only oh, a matter Kitty of time. Kitty wants to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, she loves my book. Only a matter of time. She used to do this all the time. It's okay. We have cats on set. Yeah. I mean, I have eight cats at yep. home, so. I'm officially, officially. Crazy cat lady. Yeah, well, so are you. I am too. Yeah. I think anybody after getting one. Don't put your You have more than one. You're a crazy cat lady. Yeah. man. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, my being with my, you know, my, my mom has her own makeup line. Right. So my mom and my dad, to make a long story quick, as quick as I can, they got together thinking they're going to create a makeup line and their whole story is incredible, but they did. And you know, over so time. So your dad helped with yeah. that. Okay, got Yeah, it. they were a part of it together. That uh-huh. was their journey. And that's that's a story in its own. Wow, yeah, like I didn't even know that. Yeah. Okay. So I had basically makeup at my disposal since I was like very, very young. And right. my mom would cover people with burns and scars and birthmarks. And we saw, I saw so many like people with skin disorders and trauma and like birthmark, big dark birthmarks on their face. And we would cover yeah. their you know, imperfections with this makeup. So you and would it's help waterproof. her? Yeah, I'd help yeah, okay. her. So from, from the time I was like ugh, so young. And then at 16, I went to school half day and worked for her half day. Okay. So I was learning as a makeup artist. Got like it. It's in my blood. I yeah. can do it in my sleep makeup, basically. So ma- it was makeup before body paint? Oh, yeah. Okay. Got oh, yeah. it. And then, and that's funny because as I started, as I went on, I remember like... um it was even when I was before I met Aiden, I was like, how am I going to do makeup? I worked in salons. I hated it. It's yeah. so bo- Salons suck. Mm-hmm. I don't know how people do it. I, I, I give them so much credit because yeah. I tried it and it's not for me. So I started to realize nine to five is not for me. I went to a bank and tried to get a job. I'm like, no, I need to work for myself. Yeah. So I started to do makeup and I started to do, um, try to do wedding clients and stuff like that. And, and. My mom would help me through and it, it just it just worked really well for me at that time. But I was bored, very, very bored. And makeup, I was like, this can't be it. And I'm also an artist. I love to draw. I love to paint. And I wanted to sell my art. But I mean, come on, think about it. There's so many amazing, incredible artists right. in this world. So I thought to myself, I'm not, this is how I thought, you know, I, I'm not the best artist in the world. How can I be different? Right. And being with my my dad and my mom being entrepreneurs and having the makeup line, it's just how I thought. And I was thinking out of the box, yeah. always out of the box. And I don't even know, I think when I was like, I even say this in the book, I think when I was at the bus stop as a kid, I remember being there and the kids were standing around waiting for the bus and this one girl had shoes but no socks. And I thought, I thought well, I could paint socks on her. 
Wow. Like, I don't even know where that even yeah. came from. Why right. I would even think that. But I say that in the book because mm-hmm. I specifically remember that. Right. And it stuck with me. And then, so painted socks, painted clothes, painted, I could be a body painter. And at that time, um, and before that though, because I literally, guys, I have so much stuff stuck in my memory of the struggle of before and with kids and being married and leading up to this. How old were you again when you had the, when you had Brandon? Brandon, I think it was 26. Okay. And I didn't have a job. Okay. I, he did not want me to work. He, so you, you got, but what, how old were you when you got married? 22. Okay. That's what I thought. I was telling my mom the other day. Yeah, 22. So telling her how you were coming on this week. And I was telling her that you're going to be talking about that. And I could not, I was like, I remember she either had kids young or got married young. Yeah, but I got I was getting married two, young. Okay, I couldn't get it. pregnant for some reason. I was trying and it was just a struggle. It was really hard. And I think I was stressed out thinking about it. Like the more anybody out there trying to get pregnant, don't think about it. <laughs> As soon as you let it go, you get pregnant. And that's what happened with me. So I just tried too hard and, but it, whatever. So it was like four years of, four or five years of trying before. And I just didn't work. I was like, I, I did, I, Aiden and I actually, it's so funny, Aiden and I struggled. We had a carpet company business um, where I would, can you imagine me carrying these big, no. heavy carpet <laughs> machines with him, sweating although, our asses off in houses cleaning Although I feel like carpet. I've seen you like do your Swiffer mop in the oh, kitchen yeah. so I'm many good. times. I'm a that, good like, cleaner. Yeah, you are. And you're so quick and like fast with it. I'm a good cleaner it. when yeah. I want to be. I had all that experience. And then mm-hmm. we had an auto detailing business wow. where I had no nails because uh-huh. like I, one day I looked at my hands and I'm like, no, <laughs> I want my nails back. So I told him I quit. He's like, you can't quit. And I'm like, I quit. Mm-hmm. He's like, what are we going to do? And I'm like, well, I, that's on you. I'm going to go get my nails done. Yeah, that is <laughs> Be a funny. girl again. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, but then then I had babies. So then I didn't work. I was a stay-at-home mom and I homeschooled and all that stuff. And uh, when we got divorced, which was crazy, that whole story, that's a whole different story together, I think. I'm going to focus probably more on the positive side of things and where it went. But there is one story because we really struggled hard with money. Um, I never, I, ne- I didn't grow up with money. My parents didn't have money. Everybody around me had money. And to me, money wasn't the most important thing growing up. I just remember, I want to find love. I was one of those girls. Yeah. I just want to find love. Money doesn't matter. Now it's a different story. You know, money it's doesn't funny, buy happiness, I, I but it buys in, things. I was, so there was a, is that a bee or a fly? Okay. Um, I remember being the same way. Like, I remember, because then I'd always watch these love movies. Oh, yeah. Disney sucks. Yeah. I would watch so many movies. They need to tell the truth. And I was always like, no, like, I would rather find somebody that I love and live in a shack than hate someone and live in a mansion. Yeah, that's how me and you were very alike. But now we love money because we have money. Well, yeah. I mean, money, look, I don't need to be rich. I just like to be comfortable, pay my bills, not think about it, buy the food I want. Yeah. I'm not even a brand. You you buy brand name clothes. I don't even do that. Yeah, I should stop. Yeah, you should stop. Mm-hmm. Some of it's really cheap and they just put their brand on it. Oh, it I know. It sucks. Yeah. Although these Playboy shirts, <laughs> I've, been, cute. I've been splurging on those. They're yeah, cute. Yeah, but they're comfortable and you wear them all the time. So comfortable. So. Me like, mom over like here literally, picking out my straps. This is like my seconds. pajamas, guys. Yeah. Well, it's sexy pajamas. <laughs> I rolled out, stuck my pajamas on, mm-hmm. new pair of pajamas and came over. Yeah. <laughs> but um. so anyway, not not... Money, again, money is just not, was not, I didn't care. So to me, just being happy, you know, and then doing my makeup and doing my art and, and all that stuff. But when I left, when it got really bad and I was like, this can't, we can't be married anymore. I can't be married anymore. I have to move on. What is going to happen? Well, we moved out, me and the kids, kids and I, and I have two stories that I have to share. The first one was we would never go anywhere because I was just a stay-at-home mom. I just went nowhere. And I was very predictable in my life. Like wake up, feed the kids, play with them, homeschool, go to sleep, work out, work out, always worked out. And then when we were out of it, I'm going to say like free (laughs) kind of, um, I took them to the mall and most malls close at 930 in this area and it was like 9 9 15 so it was emptying out there's nobody in the mall hallways and the kids were with me and and they were like can we run and i was like 
go ahead, just make sure I can see you. They were so happy and weirded out to be at a place at 9 p.m. at night that they just took off. And Kennedy's like tiny and she's just like follows her brother and sister. And Brandon takes off running and in his deep little raspy voice, Mommy, can I run? <laughs> so cute. And he just takes off and Claudia goes, Can I follow him? And she follows and poor little Kennedy's tag- <laughs> by tagging, trying to catch up with them. Yeah. And I started crying. They were ahead of me and I just started crying, mm-hmm. bawling in the mall because I'm like, Oh my God. First of all, I feel free. Second of all, what the fuck am I going to do with my life? Yeah. How am I going to raise these kids by myself? And mm-hmm. even though Aiden was around here and there, it was still like, on me as it always was felt Mm -hmm. like and i just was scared i was really scared and then another time before i became a body painter we were struggling for money and i would go to social services and i was one of those people that would sit in the lobby and wait for hours and hours and hours and finally and we would go to the dollar store for food which is a dollar each and i would give each kid two dollars and say you can buy whatever you want with your two dollars And we'd leave with $10 worth of food from the dollar store because that's what we could afford. I could afford at the time. And I was, I mean, I was doing makeovers for $25. It wasn't even buying me gas. So I would apply for food stamps and one day got in the mail that it was approved and we got $550 for food. And I was like- So would that be monthly or That was monthly. Okay. So I was freaking out because you're talking about like dollar food store. and like dollar dollar tree you know and i would get like chips and they didn't even have a refrigerator in the back we had no it was all like canned high sodium pasta rice the cheapest food you can get and i mean i was still blessed to have that and they even had Utz chips i was really happy because Utz is our favorite chip (laughs) so we had that on the east Mm -hmm. coast we have Utz. and um i looked at the kids when they got home from school and i said guess what and they're like what i said I have $550 on the food stamp yeah. card. We're going shopping. I was going to say, we're going shopping at the and dollar so we store went, No, we went to the Giant. Oh, wow. I, I went up, yep. upscale. Yeah. We went to Giant and I told each kid, they're little, you know. I think Brandon was like, was like maybe like eight or nine. And then I said, whatever you can carry in your arms, in the aisles, whatever you can carry, you can throw into the cart. Yeah. And you should have seen them. They were carrying food and food was dropping down on the floor and poor little Kennedy's waddling along with like (laughs) the food. And she only has like three things that she can carry. And Brandon's got tons of stuff. And I mean, it was all cookies and crap that they wanted. It was probably Christmas to them. It it was to me. And I said, Mm -hmm. I don't even care if I spend the whole 550 in this one shopping because time because I just wanted them to feel like they could have whatever they wanted because we struggled for so long without it. So yeah, we 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 made ends meet and then, you know, to make it happen, we got this house and I got so lucky to get this house. I had my grandmother helped me put money into it. Um So that's where you are, like the townhouse. The townhouse okay. where we are now. I was super lucky. Yeah, mm-hmm. speeding forward, for, forwarding a lot. So, did you when you moved out on your own with just the kids, did you have a job at that time or it was just Single so my mom, dad, no um, when when I moved out of the house with Aiden, I moved to this other house, a friend of mine that lent us his house for a little bit, first floor, second floor, and he just stayed in the basement okay. and let us have those two. He saw me struggling. So, and that's another story. But then we moved on from there and I'm like, I have to buy my own house. Right. I can't, Okay. I don't know what made me want to buy a house. It might've been my dad. Yeah. Might have said you should buy because you're wasting renting. Just buy. Yeah. It's so much better. I feel like too, especially it gives, back then, it gives us like to me, at least it gives a, more of a sense of security. It's not like you're kind of like doing a month to month. rent. Yeah, it's it felt more. more like, yeah, it felt more, more like, OK, this is our home. Yeah. We're going to make it work. But it was weird because my mom was helping me and we had a female real estate agent. And there were six bidders on this house. And we that's this is the other another story that I will never forget. We pull up to with, and I have all three kids. And I said, Do you want to go see this house? And they're like, Yeah. We pull up, it's this ugly brown door in the front. I look, my house is not attractive, okay? So I don't care. I'm not going to say, but it's my house. And it's this town, brown town house, <laughs> the brown door. I'm like, I look at Brandon, and he jumps up out of his seat and he goes, This is the house. And I'm like, No, it's not. You don't know that. He goes, I do know that. 
And I'm like, okay, whatever. So he gets excited. His sisters get excited. So we're like, let's go in and see. So we go in and they, it's like newly painted, new carpet. It's really fresh smelling. You know that new carpet smell and paint smell. So I said, Brandon, go take a look through the house. I'm talking to the real estate agent and my mom. And I hear them trampling through. And of course, Kennedy's just following along. It's just the cutest thing. I can't keep picturing her like just waddling and <laughs> and, and like, wait for me. Yeah. Like, and Brandon, they, they, I hear him upstairs. I hear him downstairs. I hear him everywhere. And I said, um, I didn't even look at the house. Mm-hmm. I did not go through the house myself. Yeah. I just let them do it. And they come back in. I'm like, what do you think? And they're like, we love it. We love it. We want to live here. And I'm like, jumping up and down. Oh my God, it gives me chills. And it makes me want to cry because the real estate agent looked at me and she goes, oh my God, there's six bidders on this house. I don't know if I can get it. And I'm like, please try. And so, and again, I didn't look through the house. I didn't look at anything. I just trusted my three kids. They wanted it. I wanted it. Yeah. And we waited a couple of weeks and she gives me a call and she goes, you're not going to believe it. I got you guys through. You Aww. have the house. She said, I told the owners the real story that you're a single mom. You have three kids. I told her the story about how the kids went through the whole house and loved it. We're jumping up and down and what they would be doing if they sold you this house. Right. I said, oh my God, thank you. Mm-hmm. So we've been there. We were there ever since. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. But soon as I was in that house... I don't. I know you know what this feels like when you go into a house you just bought and you're just looking around like, oh God, this is it. I thought to myself, I have no job. Right. I have no money coming in. What am I going to do to pay the mortgage for yeah. this? Oh my God. All of a sudden it hit me and I started panicking and I told my dad and my dad was like, I will help you as long as I can. And he gave me like $1,000 a month for a few months, maybe six months that really helped me. He goes, you try to do whatever you can do. So I was trying to become a daycare person and I went through the whole Baltimore County rules and regulations with the fire department and I was going to do a daycare and do homeschool kids in the house. From your house, okay. From my house. And I know we weren't allowed to do that in the townhouse area. We we signed like a homeowners association thing. We can't really run businesses out of there, but I wasn't going to say anything (laughs) because I was like adding up. No, I was adding up the money though. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I could be with my kids. My biggest thing was I did not want to leave my children and not, and have a babysitter. So I'd have to pay the babysitter the amount of money that I'm working. It just didn't make sense to me. So I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I got approved for the daycare, but my dad, right before I went to get like the license and to make it real and to put the ad in the paper and everything. I was saying to my dad, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this. And he's like, what do you want to do? I said, I'm an artist. He's like, then do art. I said, I, how am I going to do art? I can't make any money. I'm not making anything. Nobody knows who I am. I'm an unknown artist. He's like, do makeup. I will help you as much as I can. Just move forward. Don't look back. Try it out and see. You will never know unless you try. And right. I'm like, okay. So I cut that whole part of the daycare and just out of my mind. And I just focused on makeup. And I started doing $25 makeovers. And I was like building my name and getting photographers with pictures and different things and and like to push me along to the next step. And and I even took on like a model. Uh, somebody said to me, you, you should work for this modeling agency. And I was like, what is it? I don't model. And they're like, no, no, no. You do like ambassador programs. Like, so I did. And that ended up getting me like, you know, I was making like 1500 a month plus what my dad was so giving me. So you were me. doing makeup for models? Is that how No, I was doing was? makeup for models. I was okay. doing makeup for photographers. I was Got doing okay. ambassador work, which I was one of those girls that you'd see like in the middle of Walmart with a little kiosk mm-hmm. that had Axe spray. Yeah. Hi, do you want to try Axe? Hi, do you want to try Axe? Over and over. <laughs> yeah. At the liquor store. Would you like a shot? Mm-hmm. Would you like to try this wine? And I felt like a robot, but I was making money. Right. And then doing bar crawls and doing things. I was a pirate. I was like the Morganette girl with the Morgan, Captain Morgan pirate. And we was two girls and we were there pushing liquor. I mean, we were good because people would say, no, I don't want a shot. Thank you. By the end, we had everybody drunk. Right. And and I think I did something similar to that once and stuff like that, those like quick gigs. It's always yeah. the best feeling of like that quick, you know, a few hundred bucks of money or something yeah. that you can get from the end well, of it. Well, it was great because as you build in this company that I was in, mm-hmm. if you build, you're building your paycheck for okay. that month. Got it. So I would keep, keep it going and I'd have a monthly check coming nice. in through this company. But yet I was still able to see my children 
that was huge for me to put them on the bus. Well, until they got a little bit older and I was so tired from work that I couldn't even get up in the morning. And then I would trust them and I'd look out the window. They're like, my kids think I didn't watch them to the bus. I'm like, no, I did watch you. I watched you through the blinds. Right. And sometimes I would sit. But I watched. Sometimes I would sit on the step. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was literally falling asleep Mm -hmm. on the step, but I would watch and I we it just became like a, a a routine. And then I would get home late at night because I had to work these gigs. But hey, at least I saw my children during the day and I could and I mean, be with them. You you had to do it. You know I what I mean? To. Like what was the other option? Yeah. And, and then, that's the thing too. It's like a fine line of like doing what you love, but still totally making enough money that you can support yourself and oh your kids. Oh my God. Yeah. It was really, really tough. And then, oh, and then I had to get roommates. So in yep. between that, I was like, so how can I make my house really work for me? And I had at one point, I had a roommate, a roommate. So it was Claudia's room, Kennedy's room, the basement, and then the kids lived in my room with me, all three of them. Wow. So we would share. It would be Claudia next to me. So you were running out me, the rooms. Running out okay. the rooms. And so Claudia would be here. Uh-huh. Brandon would be at the end of the bed. Oh Claudia God. and I would keep our feet up so we wouldn't kick them off, obviously. And Kennedy had her little toddler bed, and she would lay in her toddler bed. So it's all of us in my room. I had a bathroom and shower. They didn't have to go anywhere else in the house except for food. And they would go to school all day anyway. So it didn't matter until the summertime. And then, um, and it worked. It just worked. I was collecting, you know, money from each roommate. It was paying my mortgage for me. I was uh, was a model with this company. I was doing makeovers. And my dad was helping when he could. And eventually he he stopped. And I was doing it. I was making it work. I even was doing art classes in my house after school from, I went to a PTA thing, a PTA like meeting type thing. It wasn't a meeting because I never was into the PTA like that. But I told them I did art and I'm a teacher and she and three kids signed right up and I was making money from that. And my kids were in the art class. So I did whatever I possibly could to right. make money. And then one day uh, with the modeling company I was with, she's like, you know, they're doing bikini contests down at uh, Bay Cafe it was a place in Baltimore. And I was like, oh, God. She goes, some of the girls are making some good money. And I'm like, I don't know. I've never done that. She's like, you got the body. And I was like, "Uh, all right, I'll try. So I went down there and a few times. And by the way, those things are rigged like crazy. Yeah, I remember you telling me about (sighs) that. Yeah. So whatever. I still I made a little bit, but I still struggled. I'm like, this is all bullshit. But the best part about this is that 98 Rock was which are which was our rock station local was hosting it, these contests. So when I went up and they're like, so what do you do? Before I would walk the stage, surprised I didn't fall off (laughs) Uh, (laughs) or boob came out or something. (laughs) No, I feel like you could have stuff like that. I was so awkward. Really? Yeah, so weird. I wasn't used to that kind of stuff. I'm not like that. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like you were doing, you weren't the one that was like in the spotlight. You were kind of doing, you know, you're doing the makeup and the things. I was always behind, always behind. Um, she was like, so what do you do? And I'm like, uh, I started, I have to back up because I, in between like the modeling is up, my art, my creativity was like dying to get out. So I was like, had this idea to paint clothes on people. So I had one of my photographers that I did makeup with. And I said, do you mind taking pictures of naked girls that have clothes on them? What are they going to say? No. Right. He was like, of course. (laughs) Every photographer was like, of course, of course. So I get free pictures. And I started painting different things and just practicing. And do you know I was using acrylic paint, regular really? acrylic paint that mm-hmm. you shake in the bottle that you put on like tables and wood yeah. and different things. And it was cracking on them. Oh my God. I tried it on myself to make sure it was safe. Uh-huh. And then I would put on them. I'm like, hey, yeah. it's going to crack after like an hour, but it's mm-hmm. going to look good for the pictures. Right. And then I found actual body paint over time. But so, okay. So in my mind, this is what I'm doing. So when they said to me, what do you do? I was like, it just spilled out of my mouth. Uh, I'm a body painter. They're like a bodybuilder. I was like, no, I'm a body painter. Uh Oh, what is that? Oh, I paint clothes on people. Really? We should have you on semi-regular. And I was Mm -hmm. like, yep, you should. You should definitely have me on. Definitely have me on. (laughs) And then after I was done, I thought to myself, oh, shit. I just got semi-regular on the radio and I don't really know what I'm doing with the paint. So I had to research, really research mm-hmm. and get good products because I was like, I can't take acrylic paint on right. the radio. Yeah. They're going to think I'm an idiot. <laughs> so they wanted you to come on to paint someone and like show it? Yeah. Okay. So for years, 
we would go on the morning show like every six weeks. I'd take a model and there'd be a, a, a webcam there. And I would tell the model, wear a robe. We go to the bathroom, wear a robe, turn to me, bring your robe down to like right above her butt. So her whole back is showing naked. So you can't see anything. While they're doing their radio show thing, I'm painting the front of her. Then when she's painted, she turns around. A lot of the pictures are in that book. She turns around, drops the robe, and I do the back and connect everything. Got it. And her legs are cro- Her legs are like crossed. So she was so sitting. So you can't see anything. Not yet. No, okay. she's standing. Okay. So, because she's like, well, what if I said, I'm going to camouflage that down there. Don't worry. And I would camouflage it with like a zipper or like jean material looking, and it worked. And then she would sit. But when she turned, I said, just keep your legs crossed so they mm-hmm. can't see anything. Right. And it worked. It was so perfect yeah. every time. And then they would interview her. So, and me. And because of that, I got very, I got locally known through 98 Rock. So there's a lot of people, you know, guys and different things that listen to 98 Rock. Girls do too, but a lot of guys, because they're they're kind of like a nasty morning show at that time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are now. I don't listen to them. Sorry, guys. (laughs) Um, But that at that time, it was kind of crude. Right. And, And they would put me on the spot and like say things to me about different things because people would think body painting you know i had to fight really hard yeah to get credibility right for that so because i could have went one way which is the way that they were trying to make me go but my brain kept more saying, like a sexual very route? sexual okay. very sexual and because you, my boobs are big and you know i have the kind of body that 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 attracts that like that's what i would get all the time i was used to it especially growing up as a kid with big boobs and a body and me just, I got used to guys looking at me like that. So to me, it was like normal. Um, and I knew how to handle it. But I also knew that I wanted to get corporate companies to pay attention to me right. because I wanted the credibility from well, real companies. Yeah, that, because you were producing art and it was your business. Yeah. And then it was like people, I, I, th- I almost think that by people portraying it as just like this sexual nudity thing yeah. it downplays it which Ugh. it's not to not for i don't want to say not everybody not uh, hardly anyone i feel like can actually paint on a body and make it make people believe yeah you know that it's clothing yeah and, not, and that know. is why i used like a lot of you know medium to smaller chested girls because it was easier to camouflage unless i was doing it's funny because different body types work with different designs styles yeah yeah if i needed a bustier then i could have used somebody with implants or bigger boobs or something you know i go with the body of the person and it was really interesting because it started taking off and i would just but i'd be fighting that all the way i mean i still to this day fight that not as much because they know like at least the people here but if they're new people they're always like oh body painting yeah. Ooh, ooh, I'm like, no, it's not like that. Right. And, um, but like, I mean, I started getting companies, like really good companies to use us. And I, I like to call them now like brand ambassadors because they're not, and that took years to come up with that name, which is silly because right. the name is so, it's, it, it seems like it would be so simple. So are you talking about when you would like have the models and then you'd paint the logos right yeah on for companies so, yeah okay. so i would do logos i got to the point yeah where i took it from clothes to logos because uh-huh. i was like marketing marketing how can i make because when you're in marketing and anytime you're in business for yourself with marketing you are all about the other person or the other company trying to make them money what are they gonna want f- out of you what what can you do for them to make them more money you don't think about yourself Because I was going to get the credibility anyway because I was painting, but how could I actually make money from this and make them money from this, which was the sponsors and getting people to see their logo. They were literally walking billboards and I promoted it like that and it worked. I mean, I now Brandon, it's just so funny because I just watched Brandon and your podcast. So I was like, oh, he's wrong. He's memory loss. Yeah. The first time Brandon was body painted Uh was for. I I got hired with the science. Um, oh right 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 okay yeah. The, what is it called that. down there? The the, uh, the the science center. Yeah. The science center. It was Body Worlds two. Okay. They were traveling. It was the cadavers mm-hmm. where they had the skin pulled off them. They had the camels right. and they had the okay. people and they had the pregnant lady. But you would go through and watch them all, and they're all like the, showing all the muscles and everything. And the news wanted. I was doing a Mister Anatomy. 
which also was in this book. And I did it twice, actually, for them. Um, and it got so much coverage. Oh, my God. The news came out in the morning. It was like 6.30 in the morning. And But Brandon, um, I painted. I wanted to test it because I was scared. Oh, my God. I was so scared right? to do yeah, this. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's going on the news. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this huge like world event. Like yeah. This is insane. And the Science Center is literally taking me seriously. Art and science meet. And so I was like, Brandon. And he didn't understand like what I was doing. And he would get angry at me. And because I was painting girls or people or whatever, he couldn't understand it. There was no, literally, I had no respect when I first started this. It was, that alone was a struggle, was gaining the respect of my son and for him to understand why I was doing this. Right. So I said, come here. And I took the paint and I painted the muscles like on his arm and on his chest, I believe, up his neck. And I took a picture of it, ended up on the news. And I said, Brandon, you're on the news. And he's like, what? And as soon as he saw that picture on the news that I was, his mom's on the news, he's on the news with paint on him. Yeah. I think he realized like, oh, my mom's cool. Well, I think too, for kids in general, I think, I mean, even just from my own experience of like things that I used to think of as a kid and how differently I view them now as an adult, or and even how I'll view them differently in 10 years from now. It's really, I think people or kids, you know, when kids in school are like he was saying in in his episode of like the kids saying like oh like your mom paints naked girls so i feel yep. like for him he had this thing in his brain of it was like embarrassment and like it was awkward and all this stuff but in reality he like it's hard for a kid to see your side of it you know what i mean yeah and it's like i get it i totally know? understood right I and mean, i remember one time we walked in and there were <laughs> there was these girls naked in my in my kitchen and walking around in like their underwear getting ready to put their bottoms on i'm mm-hmm. like yeah. And they put their clothes on and then they're like, is this your son, Brandon? Come here. He had long hair. Uh-huh. They're like, come here. And they were outgoing girls with, you know, mm-hmm. boobs. And they're like, come here. And they put him next to. Oh, my God. Their, he's like comes right up to <laughs> their boobs, you know, and they get a picture. And mm-hmm. he's like, <laughs> he, yeah. he just felt I think he liked that part of it. Mm-hmm. But made him feel cool. Yeah, I think. But then when he walked out of the house, it was like, oh, right. God. And I get it. I totally get it. Um, I felt bad for him. I tried really hard to stay away from his school. And I tried hard to not, like, thank God he was a good student. I never had to go in to see his teachers, really. Uh, the girls were complete opposite. I would go in all the time for um, Kennedy, especially. But Claudia wanted me to come in and see her work. and break. Like It was refreshing because Brandon never asked me to come see him in his classroom. I was like, I felt like I didn't have a kid in school. And I wanted to. Obviously, I wanted to be a part of it, but he yeah. wouldn't let me. And um, I was like... It was sad, <laughs> a little bit sad, but it all worked out. But they, he finally got, he finally accepted me for that. Then one time he had me paint him for a college thing. And I think I did do muscles on him after I did the science center and it was a hit. He had me paint his whole entire, I think chest and arms, but I left a portion out of just skin. So it looked like it was being, oh, that's what it was. It was pieces of it looking like it was ripped off and muscles behind it. And he went to like some Halloween thing, I think, something. He said he didn't go to any parties, but he did go to that. And I guess he was in college then. So um, that was, you know, after that, then he started to accept it. As soon as he graduated high school, I think he accepted it. Because I was making money. I was doing really good. And I started having like an actual event season where come, you know, come around October, November, December, Jan- January, it would slow right. down. I had event seasons. I was going mm-hmm. to DC doing events. I was doing Jonathan Ogden, that's also in there. The football, charities, mm-hmm. uh, Ravens, jerseys. and Right, because it, you know, I think that aside from the struggle of people n- maybe not always seeing it as like a business and as art, it was something that was so unique and so no one unique. else was doing it. Mm-mm. So I think the fact that they could have this where, and if you think about it, what dr- a lot of times, especially for men, what drives them to spend money is women. So to get women, you know, painted basically naked is I think that's, you know, was probably yeah. their mindset. It's like, oh, we have <clears throat> naked women, but we're also we have our logo on their boobs. So right. it works. So I, I feel like that was and that you were the only one doing that. So I yeah. feel like it was a win win because it was able to get you out there, your name out there. But well, also, I like, started them. noticing people trying to copy me. And I was like, you know, in a way that's like, a compliment mm-hmm. and in a way it was really annoying yeah because a you couple look at it as people a compliment to be the bigger person but it's fucking annoying yeah there was a <laughs> couple 
situations, I'm not saying names, but there was a couple situations where they would literally try to steal my plays out of the radio station. And, uh, and they stuck up for me. They're like, no, Jen the Body Painter's our girl. We mm-hmm. started with her. We don't need anybody else. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you guys for being so loyal because that would have really sucked. I think, too, it's pretty easy to – well, if you're smart, it's easy to see through people. And I feel like you yeah. are very genuine I and very open and it's just – I try to you're be. You're raw and people just yeah. see it as it is. And then I think when somebody comes in and might be trying to copy or be conniving, it's yeah. pretty obvious. It's really funny because now that I'm thinking about it, like the way – I going back a little bit, way I started was uh, one of my photographers, one of my really good friend photographers and very professional. You probably even got pictures taken with him once. You really? uh, Nova Modeling Agency back when. Christian was his name. An amazing photographer. A sweet so. person. I only got photographed by a, a weird guy. So No, that wasn't him. He's not weird. No. He and had, yeah, was he was younger. amazing. So he had like all these comp cards like in his office and he would get real jobs for people. So he and I put out like a, an ad and we're like doing a body paint calendar or something that we were doing. I don't think it ever came to a calendar, but we wanted it to. Um, we got all these girls coming in and we were interviewing and we were like auditioning and seeing who would be good for what. And we booked girls and it was practice for me and practice for him. And it was really cool. But that's the first time that I really dove into it. And I started noticing like so many weird things were happening. Girls were coming in either hungover and no food and they were passing out. Well, this is what I thought was happening. So, okay, girls were passing out and it was happening more often than not. And I was like, what is happening? What's going on? Yeah. They would pass out to the point where it just kept escalating. And one time I had to grab a girl at her shoulders because she was falling backwards. And I pulled her towards like me. Like as you were painting her? Yes. I saw her eyes like roll. And I was like, oh my fucking God, what the hell's happening to this girl? So I grab her shoulders, pull her towards me. And she starts, and, and then she's sweating. And she goes through the whole like, I was going to pass out kind of thing. I had to wave fan. I started getting so professional at it, waving fans at them. I'm just like, and then I'm like, okay, I can't be in a room left alone anymore with these girls because if they do fall, I can't necessarily catch them. Right. And I just finished painting them for like two hours and it's going to get so messed up. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, but why are they doing this? Why are they passing out? It can't be the product because I the think product- I know what you're going to say. Is it what happened to me? Yeah. When, when I was like with your, the knees. The breathing? Book? Well, that and like, I think right when so, you So yeah, standing. so I started like when people cheerlead, they say, don't lock your knees. Uh-huh. So I started telling people that. Like, that wasn't keep, even like, it. A slight- they were holding their breath because they okay. were scared to talk in my face with their breath. Oh, okay. So in the very beginning, <laughs> I, would, I would give them a hug and I would say, look, real close to uh-huh. their face. Me and you, we're going to be like this right yeah. now. And you can breathe in my face because I'm going to breathe in your face. Mm-hmm. If I have bad breath, tell me. I'll eat some gum. Yeah. Same with you. Mm-hmm. Do not worry about it. Mm-hmm. Right now, we are one. And if you don't breathe, you're going to pass out. Yeah. And it stopped. It wow. stopped the situation. I like broke the ice with that. So you thought they were all hung, coming in hungover? Well, a couple and- were because okay. I was up close and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> you smell like alcohol. Stale else. Yeah. Stale a- Where were ass you alcohol. Last they smell yeah. terrible. Mm-hmm. And, well, they were all pretty young. And right? then I would say to them, did you go out last night? Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, tell me about it. Uh-huh. And then she would. Tell me about it. A lot yeah. of times if I got them to talk, mm-hmm. it would keep them breathing. Got it. Too. Okay. But then it would keep them moving. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, stay still, stay still. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. You can talk. When I paint clothing, they can move a little bit more. When I paint logos, I'm like, stay still. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of times where I painted logos and I cried mm-hmm. because I felt like I couldn't do it. Yeah. I got in over my head. Mm-hmm. I'll show you this one. This one brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. I could find it. Was um, it a one more in the beginning or more when you were had been doing it for a while? I have been doing this for a while. And if you get this book, you guys, you'll see a lot of different things in here. But there's a couple of them. This, this was one of them. But this one right here specifically. Oh, my God. This one right here. Well, I can't see it. This okay. one. Yeah. Literally. Four and a half hours of tears. Like I looked up this girl. Because of the detail. She's like six foot. Mm-hmm. And I looked up at her. And I'm like, I, 
I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I can't do it anymore. And she's like, you can do it. <laughs> Finish it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I just, it was so hard, mm-hmm. some of it. Because it's like, you're doing it on a moving person. Mm-hmm. You're doing it with, you know, crevices of the right. body. And texture. And that's a logo logo. That right. was a cigar logo for mm-hmm. like a, a, a company. Yeah. And if it's wrong, mm-hmm. I look like an idiot. Right. You know, and I just wanted it to be perfect. And mm-hmm. sometimes it, in my eyes, I look at it and it's not perfect, but mm-hmm. they thought it was perfect because I made it pretty damn close. Yeah, as good as you could. Some of it looked like stickers you could peel off. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they just go home and take showers. But we have the Watch pictures. Yep. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was insane. That was like a a lot of pressure. Some of them. Um, and I definitely wasn't charging enough for it. Yeah. Because I wanted the job so bad mm-hmm. and I didn't want to lose it. And I needed to still get my name out there. And, you right. know, that just never stopped. Mm-hmm. That feeling never stopped. I still, I still believe to this day I never charged as much as I should have charged that what I was probably worth. Probably not, yeah. But yeah. I think, too, like, it's it's really hard to know when you're doing things on your own. It's hard to know how yeah. much to charge. And I think, like you were saying, there is the fear of, like, well, I'd rather just at least get the job so I have it, you know. And and then I get it. And I'm like, oh, man, they said yes so easily. I should right. have gotten, at like, another tried few to hundred. Bargain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got better at negotiating mm-hmm. over the years, but yeah. you know, it's just very time consuming. It's just a lot of work. Like mm-hmm. when you were painted, same mm-hmm. thing. Like, you know what it's like because you yeah. were there. It's hard for the model. It's hard for me. It's a lot of bending over. And then when you're done painting, you have to go to the event right. for hours and hours and hours and hours. Right. So it's, it you're talking like 14 just, hour days. Yeah. It doesn't stop. It just no painting. And then I don't know how I did it, but after the event, then I'd go party. And I don't know how I did that because I had kids. Yeah. yeah. So I would be like, you know, half eyes closed in the morning. That's why. But I struggled and I made it work. And I just kept getting recognized more and more and more. And then when I did the book, that got on the news. And, and that, you know, this is basically one of those things. Another thing was a billboard that I wanted. It's like in my mind, I kept saying, Okay, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And one of them was a book, one was a billboard. One's also writing about my life story and everything that happened. And Kennedy wants me to do this. So I'm contemplating. I'm thinking about it. It's just a lot of work. Yeah. I know it's a lot of work because of what I went through with that. Right. I think that's that too is something that you could do like gradually and at your own pace. You know, you could start it and then just kind of work on it when yeah, you feel like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. there's no real, but you got I me, mean, you should have a deadline for it because otherwise it'll just go on. You could and have, on. well, you could have deadlines for like each chapter, chapter maybe. Or section. That's yeah. smart. Mm-hmm. Got to start somewhere with it. But yeah. I mean, I don't do much else other mm-hmm. than, you know, I'm doing body painting is trickling in a little bit, mm-hmm. but, and makeup. Well, I do have a question. Mm-hmm. When you, I thought that one of the first times you did it, wasn't it on yourself? You painted yourself oh, yeah. as, that's what I, I remember, because that's in here too, I'm right? in there, yep. Okay. I'm in there for that. Because was that for an event also? That was Halloween? not no? an event. Oh, you're talking about the cheetah? Yes. The cheetah, okay. That, that for the longest time. Oh my God, yeah. I never even knew it was you until you told me it was you. Right, okay. Like I had, oh my Because you did your whole face, A lot of people said that. Three I, months later, they're talking about the cheetah, and I'm like, oh, that was me. No, I swear, it's in here, right? Yeah, I swear it really, I just got hit in the head with a bug. Um. <laughs> I swear I didn't know. Right after the story, I believe like a couple pages. Yep, you're on it right now. No, you Where? had it. You just had it right there. Yeah, like I never knew that was you. Okay, so after we did the body Here paint it is, calendar. For those of you watching. Yeah. Like you wouldn't know, would you? I would have never known that was her. And that's my mom in there helping me get my back. It's so funny because wow. my roommate too, one of the roommates that I was with yeah. or I, that was living in my house was this guy named Art. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh God. He That's might, the one with the parrot, right? He might be okay. listening to this. <laughs> he just recently reached out on Facebook to me, but I I was like, whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was interesting. He actually helped me and took pictures of me. I mm-hmm. think those were the pictures he took. That's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. He was a, he was a uh, Mexican stripper and he <laughs> rented the basement. And I don't believe Brandon was living there at that time. Brandon wanted to live with his dad for a little bit. But he knew about the parrot. He was talking about the parrot. He knew parrot. about the parrot because Brandon would come back every once in a while uh-huh. and stay with us okay. because I think his dad wanted him to live with them for a little while. Uh-huh. I felt like it was important that yeah. he was with his dad for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. But as soon as Brandon wanted to come back home, I had him come right back home. Yeah. And it was the timing was perfect because we had nobody in the basement at the mm-hmm. time. So he took the basement at that time. And, okay. and by the way, guys, his room is not a cupboard. For God's sake. 
<laughs> now I am guilty of one thing because this brings back something. In, in, oh and I, I told Dakota about this the other day and I was laughing so hard. The house is brand new. Uh-huh. So imagine fresh paint, fresh carpet, yeah. fresh everything. We go downstairs and in the laundry room, there's the steps. This mm-hmm. is probably what he's remembering. There's steps mm-hmm. and there's carpet and it's yeah. brand new carpet. So it's nice. And I'm thinking roommates, 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 money. How am I going to make this work? Brandon, you know, we could put a little bed right here and you could sleep here. It's under the steps. <laughs> and your room could be here. He's like, mom, I'm not taking the laundry room. Oh my God. I'm like, but you could wash your clothes really easily. Uh huh. And that was, he was, he was so mad. He was like, yeah. I can't believe you would ask me if I want to take the laundry room. Uh huh. He's like, I would take the basement. And I'm like, no. So, okay. So I gave him Kennedy's room, yeah. which is the smallest room. Kennedy was all the way up in the corner. Yes, it's a small room. And Kennedy was right when she was doing her podcast. It was tiny. But that was Brandon's room first. And the and only then he reason. he had the whole basement at one point. He did. Like, yeah. well, the, well, I gave that to Kennedy. I mean, I gave that to Brandon. And Claudia and Kennedy, oh my God, I barely remember this, shared Claudia's room. Mm-hmm. Can you believe they were in that room together? so small, right. And then when Brandon moved out, yes, Kennedy was like, can I have that room? I'm like, they wanted to be split up. They wanted to have their own separate space. So I said, okay, take that. I had no choice. And it's not like I didn't want Brandon to come back. And then the roommates, then my best roommate left. And then he took the basement at that point. But boy, the roommate situation was insane. Yeah. I had some crazy roommates. That's all I can say. Yeah, Brandon it, was it like was nuts. Was he like, had a parrot, and the parrot. <laughs> I remember trying to get in. You'll hear bits and pieces of this on like different videos uh-huh. because I've told stories. Yeah, but this is like the real stories. He had Art had a parrot, mm-hmm. and he had moved in. I didn't know it yet. I didn't know all his stuff was in, and I didn't know the parrot was in the house. <laughs> and I, I go to open the door, and I can't like I'm juggling, jiggling around with my mm-hmm. keys, and I hear hello. Stop. And I was like, someone's in my fucking house. And I'm like, hello. I'm like, hello. <laughs> hello. I thought it was like a, a cleaning person uh-huh. that he had got to come in the right. house. She's, like, She's trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Brandon has like, he was like, if I could go into detail of the roommate she had, he was like, it's, it's so great. hilarious. So then I open up. I don't hear anything. I'm like, hello. And I hear another Hello. And I keep going and I'm like, it literally sounds like a person. Mm -hmm. And I see this parrot going, hello, hello, (laughs) hello. And I was like, hello. He has a parrot and it's in my kitchen. And it stayed there for a couple years since he was there. However long he was there. I don't remember how long he was there for. So you had another roommate, a bird. Yeah, basically. So every time he would go and leave, Uh I would try to teach this bird. Fuck art. Fuck oh, art. My God. Fuck art. So I don't know if he, when he took the bird, he almost didn't take the bird when he left. He almost left the bird in my kitchen. <laughs> I went, excuse me. We were on such bad terms at that point. Yeah. I said, he made, he made holes in my wall. I was holding his airline tickets. I wouldn't give him his airline tickets. It was like a battle, major drama. And I said, oh, you're leaving? You're leaving without your bird? Take your bird. I don't know what happened to that poor bird. Oh, I felt God. so bad for that bird, but I didn't want the bird. Yeah. And I love animals. Mm-hmm. It was just pissing me off. Well, like, also, it was in your kitchen. It was so in it was my like, kitchen. And then every roommate left some, a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. Some piece of some, them. Some, there was furniture and they were yeah. shit. And my, my backyard started looking like a junkyard. And it started getting dry rotted wood in the back. And it started, it was, my house looked the worst out of everybody on the block. I look like a homeless, a, not homeless because we're ho- at home, but it literally looked like a disgusting. Like a hoarder. Yeah. And yeah. we weren't allowed to have any of that. Thank God I had a fence because mm-hmm. I could hide it behind all the fence. Right. But it was bad. It was really, really, really bad. And I was just me. I couldn't carry all that stuff. And I had no money, no money because all through the body painting and all through the makeup, it was always a struggle. Every time I would wait to get a paycheck, it was like, because in corp- the corporate world, you, they could take 30 days to get your money. So I would write the invoices and, and I'd have to wait and wait and wait. I'm like, oh my God, by the time I got my paychecks, the, all the bills are due again. So I had to like constantly, I had no money in my bank account, constantly, nothing. Couldn't buy the kids things they wanted. I mean, we lived, I paid for the house. It was always like, and they, they didn't really bug me too, too much. Poor Kennedy couldn't get like going field trips too much or get 
things that other kids got because I just didn't have it. Yeah. I needed it for the the real bills. Well, I was going to say too, I think once you started making money, it's like that was great, but it was still like at that point, you're just trying to pay every, like you said, pay all the bills, get the groceries, get yeah. stuff. And it's like it wasn't, it's not like you're making enough to live lavishly. It was like more like you were making, I feel like you started to make the amount that you wished you had been making. Exactly. You know what I mean? It was you like crawling like, under from under the ground. Yeah. I like was slowly coming up to like the ground level. And then once I was at ground level, then I had to build from there. So thank God, like I swear, sometimes I look back and I'm like, I don't know how I did it. There were times, I remember a, a specific time where I was crying. The kids went to Aiden's and Claudia had such separation anxiety. She did not want to go. There were so many times when she was young and was clinging to my leg and her fingernails in my leg. I don't want to go, I'm gonna stay. And I was like, oh my God, so sad. It was like bringing tears to my eyes, but I had no choice because I had to work. And I went, back home and I would cry. And I remember being in the bathroom. I turned the lights off. I put the shower on and I sat down on the shower floor and cried my fucking eyes out. And yeah, I would think like when you're really low like that, that was really bot rock bottom. I think every time I became rock bottom, I, I came out of it a lot stronger each time, but that I actually, and I would never think like suicide but I actually thought to myself, there were moments, fleeting moments where I thought, oh my God, this life sucks. And then I would think about my kids and I'm like, nope, this life doesn't suck. Your kids are here. You have your kids. You love them. They love you. That's all that matters. And then I couldn't wait to go pick them up again. Right. You know, and it just, they would give me the light. They would breathe mm -hmm. life into me every time yeah. that we were together. And that's what got me through, I think. I For really sure. do. Mm -hmm. I, I do. That and was I, like the I, driving force. When I was eight years old, Devorah, I <clears throat> wanted to be a mom. I knew it. Yeah, I wanted to be crazy. a mom. That was when people would say to me, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I want to be a mom. Yeah. That's it. That's not a job. Yeah, it is. You're just not mm -hmm. really paid for it. Right. But it is a job. And the homeschooling thing was so important to me because Brandon, his personality was so, he was the kind of kid that would stand back and be very cautious and all the kids are on the jungle gym, but he wouldn't go on it because he didn't know how to step on it first without falling. And he had to figure it out in his head. And I remember one time he jumped, he was climbing. It was, but he, we were alone in the playground and I was talking to another mom. It's like maybe one other kid there and the, nobody was on the jungle gym and he climbs and he's, I guess he got to the top somehow. Uh -huh. And I hear mom, <laughs> mommy, mom, mom. I'm like, oh my God, what? Did he fall? He's just clinging to the top of it. And I'm like, I go and I pick him up. I'm like, what's your problem? He's like, I couldn't get down. I'm like, you got up. You go back down the same way. Yeah. And he's like, oh. Mm -hmm. So it was like one of those things. He stepped out of his box, yeah. his little box and mm -hmm. tried it. And he didn't like how it ended. So he would be just stand. So I noticed he was the kind of kid and he didn't really like other kids playing with his toys. He didn't like sharing. He was just, to his sisters, he was. But like other kids, he would get very weird around other kids. And so I didn't send him socially into like preschool like most parents would. I would homeschool them, take them to the grocery store, give them each $10 and say, you have to use this calculator and add up this and spend the $10, but calculate the tax into it. And they all did it and they learned math. And the register lady would be like, this is so cool. This is like awesome. She's got hair. Hair goes flying. <laughs> this is the coolest thing. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I don't do the, the normal day of school, right. but, and then their Baltimore County would, or we lived in Carroll County at the time, mm -hmm. they had a rule that you had to come in and you had to show the work that they did twice a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh God, I got to get a booklet, like a school book for them mm -hmm. and just calculate everything. So we get the workbooks. I go to right. the school teacher's school mm -hmm. stores and mm -hmm. get the books and rip them out and say, you do this, you do this. And he hated it. Oh my God, he hated doing the schoolwork. Yeah. But I'm like, we have to do this because mm -hmm. we have to show something. And I would have it all organized and we would go in and they would approve us and They'd look at him and say, ask him questions. Mm -hmm. And he, one time, he just like started crying. It was so sad. Aww. He was like, he was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. And they made him feel stupid. Yeah. And that's why I didn't like teachers. That's why mm -hmm. I kept them out. Because I, I was bullied. Mm -hmm. I had the worst elementary and junior high school experiences ever in my mm -hmm. life. Like it made me so shy. And it made me so scared to ask, uh, like, of adults mm -hmm. to ask for things that I wanted. It took me years right. to figure out 
how to like ask. Like your own voice, yeah. Yeah, it was weird. And I saw that in him. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I homeschooled him for a, re- a good reason. And then when he was nine, he had to go to school because I was divorced and I, we moved into this house. And thank God we had Cedar Mirror, which was that m- amazing little elementary school. And that kind of paved the way for the rest of the schools. And that's where they you know, went to with the Franklin, where they met you, right? Because mm-hmm. that, yeah, they didn't yeah. know you in the, in mm-hmm. elementary school. They right. had their little friends there. And then um, and I just remember like crying. I cried a lot back then. Mm-hmm. I cried when Brandon went to school for the first time. I cried when Claudia did and mm-hmm. when Kennedy went to kindergarten. It just felt like, ugh, like every time I was apart from them, it was like my heart was being Like you ripped. had, I feel like almost you probably had separation. I did. too. I did. Because everything you were doing was for yourself and for them. I just felt like I brought them into this world. I wanted to get married. I wanted to have an amazing marriage. And like we talked about Disney, that's what I had in my head. And I met this amazing man and he was just perfect for me. And it, I didn't even know what I wanted back then. I didn't even know who I was. And then I did have my kids, so I have to say I did get what I wanted. Thank God they were all healthy. Um, and and I nursed all of them the way I wanted to, and I just I was just uh, there for them. So, yeah, so letting them grow up, especially being a single mom and do things on their own, it was very heart-wrenching to me. Yeah. Yet I still wanted them to become their own person and mm-hmm. have their own voices. Right. And they were shy. All of them, mm-hmm. all of them were like me, shy yep. like that, and didn't speak up, and mm-hmm. only recently now are starting to. Yeah, which I feel like when Claudia and I met, that's was like she I shy was, back then. Yeah, yeah, she was like sweet, innocent, shy, and yeah. I'm just this crazy young little. You probably bitch helped her come just, out of her shell. Though. Yeah, I mean, we were total opposites, but we just hit it off right away. Yeah, but that's, to- it's awesome. I mean, she was very, very quiet and shy. And then she started getting crazy, and that's when we had our crazy high Brandon school. Brandon was life. too. Brandon mm-hmm. was really shy. Well, I remember, remember, we would drive him to school. Yeah. Oh, that. So oh my god. Year, that's. So. Oh my god. I loved your mother for that. Mm-hmm. I loved we'd your take, mother for that because I was those late nights. I was mm-hmm. having those late nights. So we'd pick. And them up. she said, "You want me to just take them to school? I'll pick them up because mm-hmm. I have to get up anyway." Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh my god, yes, thank mm-hmm. you." And Carpool. it was like I felt so relieved that you they didn't have to sit at the bus stop right. and wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was all even though it. By the way, it was across right. the street. I think too, but it was a but busy road But they didn't want to cross the too. street. Yeah, it was yeah. really busy. And I think it was, it was just scary. easier just to, you know, if we were driving, because I was close too, but it was, you know, I, I technically was walking distance, but my, like, yeah. I wasn't going to walk. No, but. I think the one time Kennedy crossed the street, <laughs> a car hit her heel. Oh my gosh. She was with a friend. Yeah. Ugh, and it's, a, it, it's a dangerous road. And she's like, never again. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I was going to say too, which I know that I told you more recently um, maybe like a year ago now, but when Claudia and I became friends and I would always come over, I don't remember if you and I would talk then as much. I feel like we didn't as much. Probably not when you were young, young. No. Um, but I do remember that whenever I'd come over, I always thought the way I viewed you was so different than I guess what you actually were going through. But I just remember thinking, well, obviously I always thought you were so such a cool mom because you were so pretty and you were always just like doing your thing and I the, your mannerisms or something like I just always admired really? you That's yeah it was so like really funny, weird I stuff never known that. really weird stuff like even just like when we would when you drive us in the car and like the way that you would just like you have what is the way to describe it like you were I don't not you were confident you came off as very confident but also just you were so like you just like tunnel vision like always knew what you were doing and just zippity just really doing it. yeah like I, this is gonna sound funny but even in the car the way you would like pick up your coffee and drink it and just like always know what oh you were saying oh my god that's so funny yeah but i know what kid, you mean because i've done that with people yeah you're before. just very and like at the stoplights you would just be like like speed texting on your phone and then put it down and then keep driving <laughs> it's just like those little things i it just always seemed like you just yeah you were on a mission or something oh, that's so funny and i remember always seeing that and then also, like I said, just thinking you were such a pretty mom and it was just so crazy. You had such a good body. And I remember because it's funny, you, obviously, you're older than me. And as a mom, I was like so shocked. I said, how how does a mom have such a good body? And I feel like there was definitely you were definitely. Well, first of all, actually, and I've told you this, too, me doing my first body painting thing mm. with you was the reason I started working out. Because mm. I knew that's when you started the Instagram. It has a lot of positive impact yeah. on people. Yeah, you started doing the Instagram. And I knew that my naked body was going <laughs> to be online. And I was always skinny. 
but I had no tone. I didn't work out. And I was like, if I'm going to be on social media getting body painted, I need to go to the gym. And I remember I think I had maybe like three weeks before because we remember we talked on the phone and planned it out a couple yeah. weeks in advance. And like those few weeks up to it, and I started you, working out like crazy. Oh, that's so funny. Trying to eat healthier. And that was kind of my- A lot of people do that. Yeah, that was my starting point for the a gym. A lot of people. But I think also I just always looked at you and was like, she's perfect, you know? And oh I, my God. And, no, but so you know what's funny is it makes me wonder though, if that's why I like started dyeing my hair black. Oh I'm, my God, I'm seriously so though, because I was thinking about it and I was like, I had pretty light brown hair. And growing up through high school, I always had highlights in it. And I was like, I wonder if- there because I don't remember, but if there was any type of like I liked your black hair, and oh, then that's, that's when I started dyeing my hair black. But because you know when you're young, you look up to <laughs> yep. people, and I remember too always thinking it was just so cool, like the life you lived. I was like, I wish I could like lay in my bed and just like be chill, and but still look so good and still make money. Like I didn't ever see it of like what you actually were going through. You that's know so what I crazy. mean? Crazy. You don't realize that you're a mentor to people. No, and I just always thought you. I just I viewed you. As it like just seemed like you never you had said it all. anything. No, those were just thoughts I had, right. and then I don't think I told you until, like I said, I think a year ago or so when we were driving to. I remember having that thought about an aerobic instructor because I yeah. did aerobic teaching for a long people. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was married, I was doing it aerobics. That's right. probably what kept me in shape. Yeah, I all through my pregnancies, uh-huh. but I know what that feels like to look at somebody and look up right. to them. And I was young, so yeah. it was just like coming over. I just remember thinking like. That's, that's the cool. body I want. That's what I want to look uh, like. It was really just funny. everything. And then And look at you. She looks just right. like me. <laughs> now <laughs> now I've become her. I actually it's a it was a sick obsession. I've turned into Jen. Um no, but it just it's funny though, because that's how I feel like that's how I viewed you. And we obviously when I was younger, I was just going to your house all the time for Claudia. Yeah, I think we started talking. I think I I somehow knew that you would listen. Yeah. And I started talking well, about Well, cuz we started talking about guys. Guys. Cuz my I would boyfriends. Always, because I remember in high school problems. I was so guy crazy. I mean, that's all I even remember thinking as a when I was in high school like, "Geez, I'm surprised I have any friends because of how often all I I mean, all I talk about yeah. is guys." And I was like, "How do I have friends? Because how do they even want to listen to I me?" I didn't at this have point? any friends. Like, I had my kids. They I had Claudia, my friends. and she just would sit there and listen. But then when I'd come over, and then sometimes we'd be talking about it, and you'd either come in or we'd go into your room and talk. And then that's, I feel like, how we started talking about That's things. funny because we would talk for hours, and I'd hear Claudia yelling uh-huh. from her room, Mom, she doesn't want to talk. Let her go. Mm-hmm. I'm like, she does want to talk. Yeah. You did. If you wanted to go, you'd go. Yeah, I like talking to you. I, I know. That. It was mm-hmm. like we had some good conversations about guys right. and different things. And I was trying to help you because mm-hmm. I saw myself in you. Right. You were doing a lot of things that I did. Mm-hmm. I had some crazy ass situations. Yeah. Boyfriends, like bad. Right. Just not not good for me at all. And you were kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. But you were a little less, I think you were a little less abusive to yourself than I, don't, I was. I, I was just, I was a different person. I think you were a little <laughs> less abusive. I, I don't know what, I think I was just a nut that wanted to find love but was finding it in all the wrong people. So it wasn't, and I was young. I mean, what do you expect when you're freaking 15, 16? I mean, yeah. I wasn't, I didn't even know who I was or what I wanted. I mean, I, I like, to find Aiden was like the third guy I'd ever been with. Like, and I got married to him and had kids. Like, right. to me, I had no life. Like, it, no, no living experience. And I literally went from my mom and my dad to Aiden's mom's house. And then we moved out together. And that was it. I was like, I, I guess in a way I was sheltered, but maybe not. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it's- Well, I think too, it, it depends on the person how much experience they feel they need or they, they need or want even want to experience. Like, I feel like for me, I my issue, which I knew, was that I could never be single. I didn't want to be single. Right. I didn't like it. And it didn't even matter if the next person right. was so shitty. I just wanted to be with somebody else I remember because I was thinking like feeling that. a void. I remember yeah. thinking, oh my God, if I'm not with somebody, I'm right. going to be alone. And mm-hmm. It took a lot to, God, I'm what, f- turning 54. It took a lot to really become like break myself that cycle. Yeah. and not have that anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's very unhealthy because I look back at it. And I'm like, most of my life, I really, really wanted to be with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even at some points know who I even was. I was kind of molding to their lives yeah. and what they wanted. I didn't even know what would make me happy. I, I would sit down and be like, and I, I had therapists and different, you know, people to talk to. And I literally did not know what would make me happy. I had my art. I had my kids. I had my body painting. 
I still was missing something. Mm -hmm. I think people are always missing, feeling like they're missing something if they aren't tuned into themselves completely. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work. Yeah. It takes a lot of self-work. And it's you can't explain it to someone. They have to kind of just go through it. And everybody goes through it at a different stage yeah. in their lives. Some, like you, you're able to go through it sooner than I did. You also have a very, you know, Brandon is a very, I know he, Brandon's very busy and he makes a certain type of boyfriend, but he also allows you to be an individual. And I never had that. I had guys that wanted to control me all the right. time, all the time. So yeah. I didn't even know if I was like left alone, I wouldn't even known what to, what do, to do with yourself, right? especially without kids. But with kids, oh my gosh, like I, I don't regret the things that I did, but because I feel like they definitely made me who I am today. But after listening to Kennedy's situation with like certain people, I do regret that I didn't end it quicker and let it just drag on. And well, I don't, I think it was my tiredness. And I think also, like you said, people have to learn on their own time. There were so many times that I knew the answer was to leave. Yeah. And my friends would say, that is bad. You need to leave. And I could never do it until no. I was ready to right. do it. You have to be ready. Or what I would do is I would push them until, like, I would do shitty things. I would do that until too. they would get so angry. Yeah, and, and they then would have leave. to leave. Right. And then so I'd be, and then you. I'd be sad. Yep. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I, I oh, shouldn't have done that. It's like a horrible like self-sabotage. To yep, toxic cycle. <clears throat> I would do the same shit. Or like, I remember too, is when I was in high school, if there was nothing bad happening, but I knew that person wasn't right for me. I try to stir something up to make it end. Yeah. And then like you said, be sad about it because it's you you form this attachment and this tie yeah. to people. And it's it's it all spurs back to, you know, like we said, just not being independent and not. Which is know. weird because my parents like they were entrepreneurs right. and they would like, I don't know. I'm just one of those kids. I just didn't yeah. want to sleep out. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do anything. Well, you like, had a I vision just, of what you're. You had a goal of what you wanted. Yeah. I think for love and for yourself. And I think that it's hard. You have to go through people and experiences to find that. And I think yeah. that I feel like you and I are the type of people that even if you know something's wrong, you want to try to fight for it and try until you really are like, okay, this is not a choice. Yeah. But I think that we give things more chances than they need yeah, to. Yeah, you let them linger a little yeah. too long. And But the one thing like is, that. like I said before, I is my at my lowest times, I would come back and I would be even stronger. And it wouldn't be more than like a day or two that I would go down, down under <laughs> in, yeah. into the dark, um, on the dark side. <laughs> and then I would come out into the light and just be like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to do this. I can do this. It helped that I had support, but it was a lot of my own subconscious. You know, you have to really, really tell yourself that you can do things. And when you really do it and let it go is when it happens. And it worked. It kept working and it kept working. And so I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And a lot of bad things happened after divorce. Like it was not, it was not a fun time. And I'm not saying that you know, I, I don't believe staying in a marriage with, with children just for the children to stay married. I don't think that's smart because you're not giving yourself the love. Right. And I couldn't have grown if I wouldn't have left and gone on to my, in my own experiences and having these horrible things happen like a DUI while I have kids. Like that was horrible. And I had to deal with that. And because and, I did, I went into the down under and I went drinking and I was like, you know, really feeling shitty about myself, I guess, at that time. And and then then I had a neglect case right after that. Like, it, it was insane, the shit that happened to me. I, I was in front of the dollar store. It, I was doing this all for Claudia because she had a birthday party that we were rushing to get to and she didn't have a present. So I'm like, we're going to go to the dollar store. We spent a lot of time at the dollar store and we're going to get a present really quick. and. I left Brandon and Kennedy in the car and I left them in the front. What I didn't realize is because I was rushing, which is weird for me, I left the car on. I didn't realize I left the keys in there. That was so weird. I still don't to this day remember this. I think I blacked out. And I ran in. It was really busy. And I'm in line in this long line and with Claudia holding her hand. And people are going, there's a, someone left their kids in the car. And I see my car and I see a cop car behind it. 
Oh I'm God. like, <gasps> like, you know, that feeling, that adrenaline hot feeling yeah. that you get in your body. Mm-hmm. I had it all the way from my head to my toes. And I'm like, <gasps> oh, my God. And then I see another car pull up and I'm like, I didn't know what to do. So I like, Claudia, stay here in line. Here's the money. I'm going to go out. She mm-hmm. started crying. And I'm like, oh, God, I can't leave my kid there. <laughs> OK, we're going to lose the line. Yeah. We're going to lose our place in line. Come mm-hmm. on. So I go outside and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not a bad person. I'm a really good person. I I, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, this isn't me. This is like, I don't. I don't do anything like there's cops like there. I'm like, are they going to arrest me? This is literally after I got a DUI a week yeah. ago. So Jeez. I'm in the car right. crying, calling my parents. I got in a click case. Don't kill me. Yeah. And my dad was like, it's fine. You'll be fine. And I mean, that was shit that I had to deal with. And that was stuff explaining to me like you just you need to get on the right path. So everybody goes through downs and different yeah. things that happen that make them stronger. but. I never did it again. I mean, mm-hmm. it put me on the right path. Yeah. Thank God. Well, I was going to say too, with the whole marriage thing that you were saying, I think that, like you were saying, I think a lot of people do have this mindset that they want to stay in this relationship for the kid's sake, which I... So bad. Yeah. I, I was going to say I'd get it, but I really don't because I think that even though a divorce is can be and is traumatic to kids, it, may, it, it makes them stronger. And in, in my opinion, I think everything yeah. that a kid goes through even the worst things, it makes them who they are. And some some kids have it really rough, way way more rough than others. And that, that's really unfortunate and it's sad. You know what I mean? It's very like, sad. I lost my dad at a young age. And yeah, if that didn't horrible. happen, I might be, there's a huge chance I'd be a lot different than I am today. Oh, definitely. But I don't ever look back and say, I wish that didn't happen. Like, yes, it's horrible, but I know that I believe everything happens for a reason. Definitely does. So it's like, if you are in a relationship or a marriage that isn't working and you're miserable, even if you have kids, you have to love yourself because if you can't love yourself enough to do the right thing for yourself and leave, how the fuck are you going to do the right no. thing for your kids? You know Mm-mm. what I mean? You can't give love to your kids you know and be what the best version of yourself. You get so angry and you start taking it out on them. Yep. And you start taking it out you're mis- on other you're miserable. people. You're unhappy. Mm-hmm. You're stressed. So how is that going to reflect on your relationship with your kids? Or even the thing is, too, is you can... You even if you were to stay, there's the people that stay too, and then what? You start sleeping in different rooms than right. your spouse, and then your That's kids, so your weird. kids grow up seeing. Oh, my, my mom and dad sleep in different rooms. So it's like it's at the end of the day, people stay, but I feel like it also opens up a door for so much confusion for yeah. the kids. Rather than if you just sit them down and try to be honest, of like, look, we love each other. It's gonna but hurt, it's not go- but it's not, hey. it's not going the way it was. So no, we're, you, you know, know what? I think there's if they a way don't, to do things. If they don't do it, they're just gonna repeat the same thing that they're doing. Yep. And that or it's right going to cause is, more damage, I think. You know, it's just... I think they... Or that. But I do see them repeating a lot of things. Like, my kids, like, <laughs> they are scared of marriage because they watched me go through what I went through. So choose right. And don't jump into something. And you got to be best friends first. And then, you know, eventually... I mean, I feel like I look at... Where I'm at right now, our little group that we have going on, I feel like everybody's got a very good relationship. I feel like everyone knows each other. Like you and Brandon are have been together for a while. Julie and Nick are together for a while. Everybody's really friends and they do things together. Jesse and Claudia now are becoming that. I didn't have that. Right. I did not become friends with the person. It was very vicious. And I and you probably like this too. I was always looking. It, first of all, I didn't trust from the beginning. So right there, I should never have been with somebody. If you don't trust, you should not be in a relationship period. You have to trust yourself. And then when you start making those mistakes, you have to be able to forgive yourself afterwards. If you can't forgive yourself, you're not going to forgive anybody else. And that took a long time for me to forgive myself. Very, very long time. And I've been working on it six, seven years. And I finally did. And then I met Dakota and realized like, hey, you know. I really love the person that she is. And you choose differently. Like I would have never chose somebody like her six years ago. I would have been like, no way. Too nice, too this, too like no drama. We have no drama. I I noticed that too when you're younger or just not, I don't want to say younger, but when you're less mature mentally when it comes to people and relationships, you look at those little things like, oh, they're not tall enough or, oh, I don't like this about them. Oh my God. But when you grow out of that and you develop as a person and you develop in your knowledge emotionally and and within relationships i think you start you stop looking at yeah. the outward stuff and you you look at who they are as a person how they make you feel how they treat you and i think that's one of the biggest things that i've learned i mean obviously 
Brandon is extremely attractive. <laughs> he is. But I remember just, I mean, and I, I knew him for a while and I always knew that. But I mean, like I've said many times before in different episodes, seeing his mindset on things and how oh, he yeah. was as a person and the fact that he was different than the guys I was going for, the guys I was going for, they were always, you know, I don't want to say jocks, but you know what I mean? They were always kind of more in the popular group and they were always out partying and doing stuff. And I feel like he wasn't like that. And he was always, I always saw him yeah. like working and he wasn't always hanging around Mm-mm. people and doing stuff like that. And I, I remember the older I got, the way that he would speak and as like mature as he was and just the way that he would handle himself um, and carry himself yeah, as a person. Yeah, he's always been like that. Yeah, it just was so, I looked up to him. Like I really admired him as a person and I think that that was a big thing for me that made me more attracted to him. It was like, at that point, I didn't even care what he looked like. I was like, I really just love who he is as a person. And he was the first person, I think, that I learned to trust because I never had trust either. And I would get into Mm -hmm. these relationships literally telling the guys right off the bat, oh, I don't trust you. I know you'll eventually cheat. And I'd say that to their face. Brandon's not that tight. No, and he Mm -mm. was the first person that I think I learned to trust and I, I I just had this feeling I was like I he's older he's more mentally mature and he just he's worried about himself mm-hmm. and I feel like if I remember thinking to myself if I ever landed him like I feel like that I would know that it, it takes a lot like I feel like Brandon because yeah. Brandon wasn't the type to just sleep around or just date random girls like I was doing with guys I was like oh just whoever comes next bring it my way you know right. what I mean so I knew that if him and I ended up working out that that meant a lot because yeah. I feel like he chose, like you said, very wisely. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if he chooses me after everything he knows, then I, you know, I it think says it's a lot. great personally. Yeah. I remember, you know, that whole thing coming. Yeah, you thought it was a joke. <laughs> yeah, at first, uh, at first, yeah. because it, it was just the way you guys were pulling it off. But then when you were confiding in me mm-hmm. and Claudia didn't know yet, it was mm-hmm. like, I was like, oh my God, I'm in the middle of all this drama right now. Well, I didn't even say anything to you yet. I think he said something to you first and then you kind of were like- He kept like, doing broken sentences to me. It was yeah. like he wouldn't finish his thoughts. And I'm like, uh-huh. you can't leave me hanging here like right. this. Like he came to my room and was asking me for advice or something. And then, <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I gotta go. I'm like- Because I had pulled up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that, but he's yeah. like took off and I'm like- a little brat didn't even finish telling me like the story like hello i'm well, so curious what was funny was remember i just remember this it was he told you that and then i think the next day or two days later we went roller skating yeah. and you're like i was waiting for you to bring it up and, and you're, you're laughing like, i know and you're like um brandon said something really weird to me the other day and i was like yeah i know and you're like is it true or is this a video and i was like no it's not but you were video. laughing so much so that nervous. i didn't believe you yeah and that's why i kept saying this is a joke mm-hmm. and it took me like four times to ask yeah. you and to you were, really understand it. I think that's when you and I really started talking more too because yeah. you were who I would talk to. Yeah. You know, like that's, I'd call you and I, you were the person that, you know, when you get a new boyfriend and you're like, you have all these fun new things to tell. I feel like I'd call and tell you and be like, if yeah. he said this today or, you know, we did this. Oh my this, God, and it was, it is so much yeah. fun going back and forth mm-hmm. like that with you. But you're just like, it's crazy because the age difference, but you're like level eye, yeah. eye to eye. We see eye to eye with that. Well, I definitely think you... Even though you have way more experience and you're older, I think that you understand more of like how I feel yeah. and what I'm thinking. And you're you're so not judgmental. Mm-mm. Like, and I never got, I think what a lot of people can't understand when it comes to you is I think you, you're very good at when you talk to people, kind of just understanding them and making them feel very heard. And I think that when I talked to you, it was never like I was talking to my best friend's mom. Right. It was like I was talking to one of my friends and somebody that really just, it, you got me. And I tell you, and it was like talking to a friend. Yeah. So, which and I think I that's how I treated the kids. Like mm-hmm. I never, Kennedy said the other day, I, I treated them. I, she said, I never felt like you treated us like we were children. You treated us like we were like your like an adult, mm-hmm. just like you. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, kind of like w- the way I raised them mm-hmm. because I don't think that, you, what are you going to talk to a kid like a right. kid, like disrespectful? Mm-hmm. If you want to be respected, then you need to respect your kids. Yeah, They'll respect you back. Mm-hmm. It's these parents that are like screaming at their kids. I'm like, oh my God. And then God. the kids end up rebelling anyway. Oh my God, just, such yeah. weird parenting going on mm-hmm. nowadays, especially nowadays. So yeah. it's, you know, uh, it's so weird because like as I went through all of that mm-hmm. and there's so much more, yeah. so, so much more, I know, so I feel many like more you, stories. You skimmed the water. On <clears throat> I did. Yeah. I did. It, well, if I end up writing a book, then I won't mm-hmm. skim it. But right. there's just so many things I probably like have in my subconscious mind that I like have mm-hmm. pushed down and forgot. But, you know, as time, as, as 
hopefully we'll all be able to get it all out. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You will. Like, I think I think if you go, like we were saying, like step by step, you can kind of dive into during this time in your life, all of the, you know, then it goes yeah. down the list of everything that, because like, I even remember stories that you've told me, you know, of like of times that you, you were struggling and you needed money and you did this kind of thing and that oh kind of thing. Oh my God, just, there's some yeah. serious crazy stories. Right. Some, I think some of the kids don't even know. Right. Oh remember, yeah, you know yeah. one that kid, the kids don't even because know. Because I remember I was confiding in you about the babysitting dad. <laughs> right. And we were talking about that kind of stuff. So it's, it's things like that you, you look back on you. Well, if you don't look back, you forget. You know what right. I mean? It's like, wow, like I really had to go through that and I did certain things that mm-hmm. maybe you wouldn't do today, but at a time you needed to do them. Right. And, and no, I wasn't a stripper. I was going to say nothing. Crazy. I wasn't a stripper <laughs> nothing <crazy. They're> not, <laughs> and, or a prostitute or anything. Nothing no. against them. It's just more so. <laughs> right. And it wasn't anything like that, but it's just you. You re- I think when time goes by. And, you know, you come out of a dark place, you forget yeah. about those little things that got you to where you are. Yeah. And all of those things, they're okay. You know what I mean? All of those things made you who you are. All yeah, of those exactly. things made you Jen the body painter and just yeah. who you are today. And I think that, like we were saying over text um, yesterday, it's so crazy how many lives we go through as mm-hmm. individuals. You know what I mean? We oh live God, so many yes. different lives. We, we develop into so many different types of people, you mm-hmm. know, in the one life that we're living, which is just so crazy. I am very grateful mm-hmm. with all of it. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I do look back and think, holy shit, how did I go through right? all of but that? But you got through it and it's like, even if it you was literally yeah. like, I felt like my whole world was falling apart mm-hmm. at that time, you know? And then, and then you just, God, it just seems so big. And then you look at like the world and you see mm-hmm. war and you see starvation and you see all this stuff going on. And then you're like, oh, you were so worried about your life, but because it's like serious, like you right. have to be, mm-hmm. you, it's survival. So it's it, life is strange. It's a strange thing, but it is. I have to say, like you know, I I've accomplished a lot of things, and mm-hmm. I'm very grateful for like just just the book alone. Mm-hmm. How the book got here is a story. Yeah, that's a story. Every single thing is a story. Like so, you where, know. if people want the book, can they it's order on it? It's on Etsy. Okay. I can give you the link. Okay. Yeah. To I, it. Give me the link so I can put it yeah. below so people can get it if it's they want It's kind of to. like just sitting there. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe <laughs> Not doing people much. will. Yeah. Get some it. of my artworks on there too. Yeah. I had made an Etsy store a long time mm-hmm. ago. And um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's available. It used to be on Amazon. It's not anymore. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like people that, if there's anybody that's like an artist listening, I feel like that would be really cool. Yeah. I should have put it on see. sale on Etsy. Yeah take a little bit of money off so that yeah. they can get it no that would be cool yeah I'll but it's yeah it. it's a it's a really neat story mm-hmm. and it's it's inspiring and motivating i've been told and mm-hmm. i feel like it is yeah and i feel like and it's creative and it makes a really good art piece just alone on a table right. or on a shelf mm-hmm. and a lot of those books have been stolen out of offices <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gotten about like maybe like a dozen people writing oh me God. and saying, I need to buy another book. I'm like, yeah. why? Because stole someone stole it. I'm like, but it was like written to you. Yeah. So what are they going to do? Like, that is like how are they going to explain right. that it's like written to them? Yeah. You know, autographed. No, that's and amazing, they're like, though. I don't know. Someone took it. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, don't leave it in your office anymore. Yeah. Take it home. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's. It's really cool to to know, and also with the body painting, mm-hmm. I think when I to get I got off track with it, but like the main one of the main things of body painting is that it makes people, like you said, self aware. Mm-hmm. So they're doing good things for themselves. They're right. going to the gym. They're eating better. They feel good. They're doing. I get a lot of people who are turning fifty mm-hmm. that want to do this for themselves. I get a lot of pregnant or had before COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, pregnant people and their husbands come along. Mm-hmm. There's one that I did. I don't think it's in there, but I took the dad's hand mm-hmm. and put it on the belly and then painted it into the belly. Yeah. It's a dancer mm-hmm. and the dad's just holding her belly. So if you look really close, you can see the hand in it, but yeah. it's, it's neat. And it's just creating individual pieces of artwork that, mm-hmm. you know, they can blow up and hang, hang up in their rooms. And, and yeah. I've done so much. I've done a lot of breast cancer patients. And right. It's just, helps people and so it's a business that yeah it's my art and i'm showing my art off and i'm creative but it makes other people feel good too yeah. and i think it opens another door for art as a whole because it shows that art doesn't just have to be on a piece nope. of paper or you know I mean, you see a lot of body yeah. painting I, I people send me pictures and i'm like oh yeah that's really cool where you see them doing like 
a bunch of people are painted into a flower and then they just move or they're starting and they just okay, go into yeah, it. Yeah, that's amazing, but it's, it's not cool. it's not Jen. So. <laughs> Might be you. a little biased. It's but. funny because you know that there's a body paint show. What was mm-hmm. it called? Oh, do you remember what that was called? Oh, no. it's a body paint show. And they asked me to be on it several times. Skin Wars. To? Skin Wars. You didn't want to go on? No, because I not. First of all, I couldn't take the time away from my busy schedule. Got it. Okay. And I know I didn't think they'd pay me much. Uh-huh. And I couldn't leave the kids at the time and my life. And also, I am not a competitive person. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to judge people's artwork. Right. It's terrible. I couldn't yeah. even be a judge on that. Because I'd be like, I like everybody's it. art. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I can't choose. I would feel bad. You were doing I'm the kind of person yourself. that feels bad for a piece of paper on the floor because it's yeah. not like in the right place. Mm-hmm. I felt bad for the trash the other day mm-hmm. because it was in the rain and they didn't pick it up yet. Mm-hmm. Dakota's like, you are weird. I'm like, <laughs> it's called something Yeah, where you feel bad for things. I don't think what you're that. What is that called? There's a name for it. Yeah. No, it's not empathy. It's it's a Empath. really weird. No, it's no? a really weird word. So you're word. past that. It's you're... like a, it's like a disorder. So when you care for things that are non-existent. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't have that. Stuffed animals, like yeah. carts, grocery carts that are in the middle of the, yeah, of the parking lot. I would say to the kids, oh, I feel so bad for that cart. I want to go put it away. My mom and I have it. Really? I don't know if my sister has it. I have to ask. But I yeah. wonder if Claudia and Ken- I feel like Claudia and Kennedy kind of like. I think they make fun of me. Really? Mm-hmm. I feel like Claudia somewhat has like things. Maybe. She definitely cares more. I don't know if she's she'd care about more, a grocery cart in the rain. No, probably not. But I am not good with that. If anything, I've gotten worse. But I think also because we live in such a scary world that I'm it is so scary. resistant to, you know, I just get nervous. I don't you even feel bad be, for bugs. No. Yeah, I do. The only things that I really feel, I, I, <laughs> I keep things very small and minimal. It's like the people that I love and care about and my cats. I was going to say you care it. about your cats. Yeah. Like, for example, yeah, if I didn't have the cats in the house, I would not give a fuck about what if god forbid if the house went up in flames like that's, oh right that's not my concern it's what's in the it's the cats i don't yeah. care about the material thing. it's the people that i, I care about yeah. and the, you know yeah but not a shopping cart not a flower i'm gonna get one of the no i'm gonna get oh my god i'm so bad at it yeah but i don't have i'm that. terrible just terrible but it makes you a nice person i so. guess it makes me silly <laughs> but it's guess. okay at least you're nice I you're nicer um, than me in that aspect for definitely sure. I, agree that, with I think that that's part. where you and i definitely are different you're more forgiving yeah you're a lot yeah. nicer yeah. i'm just this i i'm i struggle with that but you know how you I might am. change in time yeah maybe when i'm older not right not yet i'm not there yet i don't want to change yet with that i think it i, I do th- i think i hold on to that aspect of myself because i think mm. it also it kind of makes it's part of my personality one yeah. day i'll be a little bit nicer but not you know what's funny <laughs> like the kids like when i when there's a bad driver there's, mm-hmm. you know i used to be aggressive before uh when i taught the kids how to drive mm-hmm. after kennedy now when i get behind a slow driver i catch myself i'm like oh go and then i'm like oh that could be kennedy yeah i have to get i have to mm-hmm. be patient I it think could be a new driver yeah. it could be like I think that's I think that's the older and more wise you get. You're just I think you become my mom's gotten nicer. Yeah, I was gonna say so that. I was things, gonna say, look at your think, mom's probably how I you're gonna be. Like, old, but not not quite. all older people, but I even with my grandma, like you can just tell people. I think they let go. I think of we the, just feel it's different. Yeah, it, it, you, you, see, just you, they, you, you just don't. You just don't care like, anymore. Yeah. You, don't, you don't care the same. Yeah, you don't. I think it's you care more about like helping others, and it's not all about yourself. I think when sometimes when you're young, you can be more selfish and like you know, it's all about. Yeah. At least that's how I kind of think sometimes. But I think I was always like that though. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I think mm-hmm. I was even as a kid. Yeah. I would feel bad for like my stuffed animals. Always felt bad for my stuffed animals. That's probably Toy Story's fault. That is But bizarre. Toy Story didn't come out then. They didn't have that. <laughs> so I don't know where I got that from. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I need to I would look make, up the disorder. I would, put, I would put life to things. Like I put right. life to inanimate objects. Mm-hmm. Like they have a heart yeah. and they're breathing. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's weird. Okay. Yeah. There's no medicine for that. No. But mm-hmm. hey, I mean, it's part of you. So. <laughs> it is. But no, I think I think your story. It's wild. It's, it's it's wild, but it's also like I said. I think the most important thing for people to know is that because even basically telling you how I viewed you so differently than what your story really yeah, was that's behind crazy. the scenes, and I was in your life. Yeah. So not obviously not during when you go, when the kids were younger, but I think it's funny. I think a lot of people thought I had money, mm-hmm. even though I'm in a townhouse. If they knew where I lived, they well, here's the thing too, and I, this is why people say don't judge a book by its cover. But you always looked 
Yeah. You know, very, you're beautiful, very well put together. So it's like nobody's going to look and be like, oh, she doesn't have money. People don't think that. I think people don't correlate the two. They, it was money and it was, or if they didn't think I had money, they thought they could pay me mm-hmm. to, and give me money. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. be like a lot of try to sugar daddy type me. Yeah. People, type of people would try to get me. And they like, you know, it was that all of my life I would get that. So and then and then of course I go into body painting and so the comments and the client tell that would come to me and I'd have to like oh my god some of the stuff where I had to just be like I got smart with it you know you started to just know like to ask certain questions to not because I would spend so much time on an email or a phone call and then and I didn't realize like oh they just they're not even going to spend money they're not even going to hire me they just want to ask me questions about this and. I was just like, oh, this is like terrible. I've got to figure this out. So eventually I started getting harder with it. And then I would hear people say things and I would just like kind of snap and say something back and they'd be like, I didn't mean it that way. And I'm like, "Mm, you did, but it's okay because I caught you and I made you feel dumb. Right. You know, I don't like when people, especially if I'm at a corporate event and somebody's coming up to me and saying like dumb shit about body painted Mm -hmm. naked girls that were guys even Mm -hmm. it's just like no but over the years i think i've gotten a little bit less rigid Mm -hmm. at times i think you probably had to be too because you know if you're doing all of these events and people it gets annoying it does get annoying and you know it's 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 a lot of events that have alcohol Mm -hmm. at them and i have to deal with all that stuff and Mm -hmm. the guys just i think that's probably what made me like really turned off over time. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about guys. I love guys. <laughs> but girls are definitely not like that. And it's hard when you're used to getting in this business and, you know, looking a certain way. I mean, I shouldn't have to change the way I dress because no. I don't want a guy to say something, mm-hmm. you know, to me. And then there were times where I wasn't even dressed bad and they would still say it at these events. Right. Just because I'm the body. Oh, you're the body painter. And then they would start to ask me, I can't even think of questions right now that would, they'd always be the same questions though, the, the same stupid questions. And I'd be like, sometimes I would just ignore it and just walk away and be done, you know? And But it's funny because it was appreciated by everybody just in a different way. Everyone had their own little take on it. Some would get aroused. Some would be like, <laughs> wow, with the artwork, yeah. which is the ones that I took to. Mm-hmm. You know, and other ones would look at it like an opportunity to like take you out, right. like, go out on a date. Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. And I think too, because I feel like a lot of people, there's so many talented people, whether it's mm. art or singing so many. or dancing, whatever it may be in there, it is, there is such high competition because, you know, a lot of people are artistic and have their own talent. Um, But I think that your story shows that you can, it's normal to struggle and it's mm-hmm. not... It's not anything to be ashamed of. And if anything, those struggles and getting through them Mm -hmm. is what is going to, like you said, make you come out stronger. Mm -hmm. And once you let go, and I think stop stressing so much about the struggles, even though it's really hard, easier said than done. Yeah, it is. I think that's when you start to see things more clear. And then just when you're in the moment of it, it feels like it. And it's tough. There's so many things, even if it's not with a talent, there's so many things in life that can stress you out and you just struggle. And I feel, feel like, like everybody's stressed rock, rock out right bottom. now. I feel like yeah. the whole world is. I yeah. really do. You're always going to be stressed about something. Yeah, but I feel like it's different. Than... Like I don't go to stores anymore. Mm-hmm. I order all my food. Yeah, you I don't know like this. going to stores I, either. I, I don't go shopping. I order on Amazon and yeah. different websites. I don't like to leave and the house often. I went to the store the other day. We went to the gym and then we went to the store mm-hmm. right after. And I was with Dakota and I was like, I feel weird yeah. in here. And she's like, why? I was like, because it's a store and there's people. Right. And you get like, used I to people. I feel so like. We got used to people not really looking at us during COVID. And then it's like you go into a store and when somebody looks at you, I think it does give this, I don't know, at least I feel that way. Like it gives me an uncomfortable It was very, vibe. I had this very anxious feeling because I felt like everybody was in a rush and I, and I haven't felt this in a long time. And I felt like everybody was just like not. The only nice person was the person who where we were paying for. She took to us some for some reason and we started talking and like I felt bad because there's people behind us, but I just felt like everybody was just like pushy and yeah, like oh it was just I I was like I don't want to do Chaotic. this again anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
I'd rather just pay a little extra and order my food right, and not deal with it. And that's that's sad. It is sad. I've, I, I literally told Claudia that the other day also. That it's really sad. It I just, where did all of the, I feel like we're all going backwards and mm-hmm. not forward. In a way. Yeah. And it's bizarre. Mm-hmm. And we need more unity and we need like to, but, we need more but everybody, art. we need more art. Mm-hmm. Well, now that COVID's over and mm-hmm. everything's opening up, I'm starting to get calls again. So, right. you know, and there's games now. I'm doing a football jersey actually. Awesome. On a kid. Yeah. On his dad is has hired me to do this mm-hmm. on his first, his kid's first football game. Yeah. So he wants like a And that's Ravens probably something top. he'll never forget. You know what I mean? No, and he'll never forget that. Right. This. Never forget it. Especially because I'm filming it for my right. channel. <laughs> so we're going to send yeah. it to him. That's awesome. But it'll be interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just happy right now being home, yep. doing my OnlyFans, mm-hmm. being with my eight cats and my girlfriend. Yep. Wow, has life changed. It really has. With, with two <laughs> full sleeves of tattoos. Right. And Here's my t- – oh, this one's not done yet. Almost done. Yep. This is done. Like, uh, what was happened? I don't right. know what's happened. And it might change again in another 10 years. Probably. Yeah. I'm going to keep getting older, though. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Well, I don't know. You don't seem to age on the outside. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> Yep. They have some new stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. So I'm always, and, and I'm a licensed. The, you will be the first to I, try it. <laughs> yes, I will. Well, not first, maybe second. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see what but the I first But you'll try it. I'll try it. Uh-huh. Um, I, especially if it's free. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. I'm not that much of a guinea pig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some major problems with yeah. that. So I won't do that. But there is some interesting procedures out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to stay young. No, I just feel like some go really overboard. Yeah. It's easy. I understand that. that. It is easy. Especially if you've had kids and your body's Mm -hmm. like fucked up. Yeah. But you're, I think that I was, it's been, I I worked out the whole time. No, you did. Through all of the ups and downs. I still went to the gym. I mean, I was a teacher mm-hmm. and a rubbing instructor for years, like 15 years. And I think, too, if there's things that you're insecure about and the only way to fix it is surgery, why not? Yeah, do my stomach you, you was never do. going right. down. To it, it, it grew and then it like shrunk and it grew and it shrunk. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like a skin. rubber band. You know, yeah. the rubber bands that you mm-hmm. just put around something, you take it off and it's just yep. holds its mm-hmm. hugeness. Right. Yeah. That's what my skin did. It was mm-hmm. disgusting. Yeah. So I had to get it cut off. I didn't mm-hmm. feel good. And and honestly, that's probably what jump started the body beanie because mm-hmm. once I got my boobs done and my stomach taken care of after kids, I felt good again. I felt mm-hmm. sexy again. So yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead. I mean, I always had mm-hmm. a decent body all the way up until kids, mm-hmm. but they're worth it. But I feel like mom moms should have mommy makeovers automatically. Right. Should be paid for. From Why not? From the yeah. from the father, mm-hmm. because we go through a lot of shit. <laughs> from the dad, yeah, that should from be part the of the part of the or whoever agreement. got them pregnant. Uh huh. Yeah, wh- make sure you pay for my plastic surgery and makeovers afterwards because I need to look hotter than it before should be I had in kids. like the agreement of a marriage. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because you know what, if guys had to go through what us girls go through being pregnant, yeah. I don't think they would make it. Probably They're babies. Not. They cry. They yeah. whine. Yeah. They get sick and they cry and they whine. They're not mm-hmm. used to pain. Definitely not. No. You know, unless they're, of course, like in the military or they're mm-hmm. going through some kind of like Navy SEAL mm-hmm. sh- training shit. Yeah, they fucking pepper <laughs> they, spray in They the almost eye. kill them yeah. or they do kill them. Mm-hmm. That's different. But I'm talking about the normal guy. Yep. Can't Get relate. pregnant. Mm-hmm. See what it feels like. Oh, yep. Nine months of that. Yeah. And then you got to get them out mm-hmm. somehow. Yeah. So two C-sections and a regular vaginal birth for me. Yeah. And that killed my body. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, I still think I'm still proud. Well, yeah, I can't you believe look, it. You look amazing. Thank you. I remember saying, seeing an aerobic instructor, because to me, again, that mm-hmm. was my mentor, all these girls, and they would have babies and they'd look so good. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God, I want to look like right. that. Like, mm-hmm. how? They're like, you should teach it. You'll have to do it. You'll be forced mm-hmm. to go. And I was forced to go all my life. And so, mm-hmm. I mean, I was pregnant, big and pregnant and doing obliques, like mm-hmm. lifting my leg and doing obliques yeah. because the, you know, the muscles go to the mm-hmm. sides. You know that, right? Yeah. They open up the split. Because some, split people, some people need to get surgery to get it back, To right? get them back because okay. sometimes you can put your fingers kind of through a freshly, uh, if a baby's born, you can mm-hmm. put your fingers through the mother's stomach and Jesus. like touch down into the, or because the stomach hasn't, come, the abs mm-hmm. haven't come back yet. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, some of them need them back. Thank God mine came back mm-hmm. and because they were strong. And, and I remember them saying after the C-section, they were like, 
you you have some strong ab muscles. I'm like, that's gross. Yeah. Like they literally saw my muscles uh-huh. from underneath. That's crazy. Yeah. But I did it and, you know, I just, whoops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just hit my hand. I was like, uh. I talk with my hands so much I that know, it's so hard to sit here like this. You don't have not- to. You can, no, you can use them. No, I'd be knocking this mic okay. over. I'd be banging everything would be like on the that. floor. Yeah, everything, would, and usually I twirl my hair. It's I should, really hard I should have not given you. I know it is hard. I can never get comfortable. I should have given you restraints on the chair oh, yeah. to hold your arms down. Oh, that's, we're, I'm watching the originals right now, mm-hmm. and they restrain the witches a lot with these cuffs. Yeah. So it made me think. So you of need that. to be a restrained witch over there. Yeah, I need it. No, it's so it's really hard to sit here and get comfortable. I'm always it moving. Is. I'm like, I always think, gosh, people probably oh think I'm, I'm the antsiest motherfucker. But my but hands I can't. underneath are like moving. Here, I know. I so. always am like picking things and touching. I need a. We need. I should give people stress balls when they come on. Oh here yeah, that's a good idea to like de stress. Yeah, this is the longest I've not really like. I mean, I move my hair out of the way because it gets and I'm so hot sometimes, yeah. and I'm still kind of having hot flashes. Not as bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Menopause. Mm-hmm. Yay. So that'll be over soon. But I'm I'll have like, to have, a, like I'll have, to have an episode for you for every single oh my God. little life it, I thing swear, that people go through. I, have, I literally feel like I haven't even touched on anything. Yeah. yeah. And I did. Uh-huh. But it that's literally, like you said, yeah. I skimmed it. Mm-hmm. I have but so much. Like it's a good life. introduction, though. It is. And I think it's, it's good, too, because I think if people want to know more, get the book. You yeah. might be writing a book. And then you have your own channel that I feel like you have... You a know, lot of stuff on yeah, there that I've like talked dove about. Yeah, like into and things like that. So I think that, you know, if people want to check out more, mm-hmm. they look at your stuff personally because I think that you're – and you're still body painting. There's still stuff out there. Yeah, so. you know what's funny? When Brandon would do those game shows mm-hmm. and we were able to, like, do little snippets of our lives here yeah. and there, it's funny how, like, you could never explain it no. in description and give it that explanation. People would just take it for what it's worth right. and decide on their own and judge who and figure out who yeah. you are. And meanwhile, they were all so wrong. Well, that's why I like the podcast platform because I think yeah. it, it. I think when I first started, it gave me a voice, and people got to see me outside of just the videos. And yeah. then now it's like I feel like I can give this platform to other people who have a you know give them a voice, and then in return, you know, it's make amazing. others feel more really. You know, they feel like they yeah. can relate and understand and feel like they're not alone. And yeah. I think that that. I mean, I loved watching you and and Claudia together. Mm-hmm. I really did, but. To me, this is so interesting. Like so far, I've it's seen take on Kennedy, it. I've seen Brandon. Mm-hmm. I'll watch mine. I'll watch the next one. Like I actually yeah. look forward to watching these because it's I cool. feel like they're interesting, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm yeah. very happy and proud of you. Thank you. I'm happy that you found something that you're excited about. Yeah. When you it's told important. me about it, you know, I was still kind of overcoming a sickness, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't like, but I'm really excited for you. Thank you. Yeah, because it's like very relatable stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's a lot of people that will enjoy that. Yeah. It's big stuff too. I think it's, I think that the way that we started, it was starting out as something that was two best friends, you know, and it was amazing. And it was amazing because I couldn't imagine anything more perfect for Mm -hmm. her and I to do. And then we grew out of it, which Well, everything changes. Nothing stays the same. Life changes. And now it's like, the thing is, if if we didn't ever start it, I wouldn't be here now. Exactly. So, and it's it's just so amazing. See, and that's how I feel like if I didn't start body painting, I truly don't think that we would be anywhere. No. I don't think anything would have happened because of Brandon explained it. Mm -hmm. The body painting, then it leads to the Brandon working with us Mm -hmm. and Nick and Corey and Kennedy and then it leads to it trickles down their on, own and channels. Then and then you <laughs> get brought in. And then yeah. Julie and Nick are brought in. They right. have their own stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it just, I feel like it's, and the fact that they all loved YouTube mm-hmm. helps. Yeah. But I still feel like, like Brandon said it, he said a little tiny thing and I caught it, that the body painting fueled it. Mm-hmm. And it did, even though we made no money. Well, I think that mean I think It was the it, lighter fluid. I think that. It was like. It's important. And I. You know, I always agree with that. Um, but I think it's important because I think that that you really I think you were the the foundation of it. And I yeah. think that it's important that you that people recognize that. Yeah. And it is the truth. And every while, well, yes, every one of, you know, everybody in the group, but also every one of your kids has their own talent in, a, mm-hmm. in their own unique way. You were I mean, you're their mom and you were also the foundation of that talent. Yeah. You know, and it, you know what's really it's you. really hard because. When you're going through all that, you're like, you want to make it so bad Mm -hmm. and you want to, there's so many people out there that are doing this and you want to make it so bad that you'll do anything. You'll walk on people, you'll backstab people, you'll 
you cannot do that. You'll take in, you'll, you think you'll like, cause I remember feeling like this, like, oh, they didn't mention my name. Oh, they didn't give me credit. Oh, this person like said they were going to do this and they didn't do it. Like so much shit that I took from people that I wasn't getting and it wasn't getting me to the next step ahead. And I had to swallow like my words. I had to like, just be like, just be patient. Things will happen. There's a lot of other people that would not have been as patient and would have stepped more forward and would have made mistakes. You have to slow down too. You you can't go too fast. And I feel like I it, I took a lot, like you said, I took steps back. I stayed behind the camera a lot and I wouldn't speak up. And it just kind of, maybe if I did, it would have moved a little faster. I don't know. Or maybe if somebody would have given me more credit or spoken up for me, I would have gotten further along faster. I don't know, but I wasn't that kind of person. And I did everything myself pretty much, you know, and the models, the models started speaking up for me when they started saying, well, Jen, the body painter, or Jen, this or Jen, that I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much. Cause I wouldn't be the way they're like, go up there, go up. I'm like, no, I don't want to go up. They're like, just go up. And I wouldn't do it because it's like, and then, so there's many, many times people didn't know who I was, you know, and then I would have cards me. They're like, the models are like, give me your cards. We're going to hand them out. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Like, I wasn't a pushy, pushy person. So it's amazing right. that I even made it mm-hmm. this far like that. Because I figured the talent, the art and the creativity would push it. Mm-hmm. And it did. And still, like, I still to this day am not like that. Right. <laughs> like, I could have been doing a lot more mm-hmm. and it could have gone a lot faster. Yeah. But, and then when Brandon came to me and said he wanted to do something, I was like, oh my God, thank you. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Yeah. And it was really cool working with them. Mm-hmm. So it was like everything It was a whole changed. build up, right? And I think that it all went through its own waves and- And it's going to keep it's tra- doing right? this. And it's transformed it's so much because now, it's, look, I mean, when you first started, I mean, it was more like radio shows and not so much social media. Now it's social media and you can advertise it a lot and promote right. it on social media and show off your work and you vlog it. You know what I mean? Now you're right. able to go and film when you're going to go paint somebody and it's a, it's a whole new- realm of things and yeah it's, it's crazy because it's, it's really it has kind crazy. of taken a step back a little bit mm-hmm. for me i'm but not now you have well, new be, opportunities with it true you know? but like where is it gonna go like my dreams were so big mm-hmm. and they terrified me mm-hmm. and then i did it and now here i am and i don't have any other like this is the first time that i don't i haven't felt like i've wanted like a big dream to happen because i feel like i've had a lot happen and and one might spark, you know. I think maybe that it's, I think the book that Kennedy's yeah. talking about is something that's really interesting. That could become something that you, yeah, you grow. She was like, for. Yeah, Kennedy's a trip because she's like, you could do a show from your book, and I'm like, oh my god, mm-hmm. but I could. Yeah, you could. I mean, I you could, could do anything, right? Yeah, if I really want to, you really have to want it. I was gonna say, I think too, you're in a more you're in a time in your life where I think you're taking more downtime and you're kind of just relaxing. And I, I am. And from an outside perspective, I feel like growing up and seeing you, you were always on the go. Yep. You're always working out. That's you funny. were always on the go. You were always body painting, doing something, going out, doing an event. You were always on the go. So now to me, I it makes sense to me that you're finally just, it looks like you're just finally chilling out and yeah. relaxing. Sometimes and I think, it makes me feel guilty. Yeah, but I think that Everything you do should be in your own time. And if this is where you are now, that's fine. And then the days that you want to get up and you feel more passionate and you want to have a goal, set yeah. it, do it. And then I just think that now it's it's nice to be able to do things on your own time. It is. You know? It's and nice. It's I'm going to spend a, a lot place. of... I'm, I'm part cat now. Mm-hmm. So yep, yeah, I've gotten a cat fight today. I have the scars right here. The scratches <laughs> to prove it. <laughs> that's why she has those long nails. Yep. Yeah. We, we went at it with mm-hmm. each other playing. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I love my life now. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, it's, and, am- it's amazing to see how much has changed and how far oh we've God. come. And and even now, like the, the girls still have stuff in their closets mm-hmm. at the house and we're slowly cleaning the closets mm-hmm. out. And we're like, wow, look at this. Yeah. And we just found Claudia's stethoscope. She was asking uh-huh. for it like a year ago. And we're like, yeah. we don't know where it is. And we just found them. It's like still they're there. So it's like their presence is there. And I'm like, mm, every once in a while, it like makes me sad. But thank God everybody's, you know, close we're all by. Great, close enough. Yep. And, and we all see each other. And thank God, yeah. Like I love the fact too. that I love that. Mm-hmm. I love the fact, like uh, you guys, like everybody who is our group is like basically like our family. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Absolutely. I'm so glad Julie's working with you because I mm-hmm. said she's like family. Yep, keep she it is. in the family. The producer over there. Yep, yep. Because I was wondering because 
the last time the la- the two videos i'm like who is she talking to who do i keep looking who over is she at? talking to person, and then yeah. she's like julia said is she cat sitting yeah she asked if you were here to just like play with the cats in the background but like yeah. she kind of did because last time honey yeah i know honey it was at night and honey and blue are down here yeah, and, and julie's like went- and julie's kind of trying to grab the cat can you imagine like, if they knocked it I know. No, it's fine though because I, you know, as uh, we like to keep things natural. So if we have a cat jump on set, what if we knocked it over? I don't think they would. No. Oh, with her face rubbing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would be so funny. That's what Julie's there for. You know, she monitors, she produces. That's awesome. She's the whole deal. We love you, Julie. We do. And Julie will have her own episode, guys. For those of you asking, so Julie, you should get body painted for one of your episodes. We can just body paint your back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or just your boobs. Well, <laughs> Julie's got some big boobs to body paint. And a big butt. But they're saggy, so. No. No. I, you know, my mine are up mine just won't even drop, so it's it's totally fine. Yeah, you are <laughs> Mine are just so tight and up high that I that you my years nipples, ago. My nipples um actually face upwards, Julie, so I wouldn't be complaining. Let's just get a happy I know. Seriously, just combine the tits. So. That's funny. That's because your skin was so tight. Yep, it's fine. When I'm older, they'll they'll be yeah, fine. They will. But yep. for now, I just got nipples that just look straight ahead. So that's nothing wrong with that. No, it's okay. At least you have nipples. Yeah, at least they're perky and <laughs> they're just they're there. They're just I'd have balls. to. Co- oh my god, I have so many stories of that. The nipple covers. Yeah, pasties. Yeah. So that's another thing. Like, if you ever want me back and to go dig, no, for sure, dig into yeah. anything specific, we can do that because yeah. there's so much more. Like there's so many body paint stories. Yeah. Right. On each thing on its own has like a oh whole God. thing we could go into. But so many. You can ask me different questions. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. It's just so it's just so many. Yeah. No, but seriously, thank you so Running much. Running into sprinkler systems on. and shit. Oh my God. I loved it. I know. I'm so happy. It's I was like think, therapy. It's funny though, because I I mean, I was telling you, I was thinking about who I can start with on here. And obviously, it was like Kennedy, Brandon, and I was like ta- t- thinking about you, and I said, to hers would be great. Because not only because of everything you've gone through, but then I feel like you do something that's so unique. Yeah. And it's a form of art, but it's a unique form of art. And it's I'm so different. Just, I really thank you for it because like, it's been a while and I'm yeah. not, I never really got a major opportunity other than the book to talk about the stuff that I go through and the things that I went through. And I, and people won't know unless you talk mm-mm. about it. People don't know. You mm-mm. know, it's it's easy to judge a book by its cover and you have no idea what somebody experiences or nope. their struggles. And when I do my own videos, sometimes I think I'm just babbling and talking shit and like I, I'm bored. Like I get bored of myself. So I don't know what people want to hear. Like, and it just feels good to know, like, to 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 be able to talk explain about it, it. Yeah. yeah and i know you know a lot of it but some mm-hmm. of the stuff i said you might not no, have yeah. known Mm-mm. and remembered i know with brandon mm-hmm. you knew everything he was saying so it yeah. was weird mm-hmm. i yep yeah, but th- but there's a lot more to it yeah. so you know for sure yep that's awesome though but i love you i love you too and i want to thank you also for just always being someone i could talk to but also somebody to look up to because even as a kid, like I said, you don't always know, you know, the yeah. details of things. So it was really cool to have. I mean, like I've always said, it's like it was like a second mom, but also like a best friend. I'm so glad because so Claudia always things. made me feel like she was like that I was bothering her friends. No, I don't think <laughs> she I don't just think didn't want to. You like, were always so like cool and easy to talk to. So, yeah. Well, she so knows I, I talk that. a lot, Claudia. Mm-hmm. And well, we she both knows do, like so I, got along. I might hold somebody, you know, and make them hot my hostage and talk to them and but it's not so she was like worried about that but no like i said if she wants to leave she'll leave yeah believe me mm-hmm. and here we are i feel like i know. probably walked away because i felt bad for her and i was like oh man i wanted to still <laughs> talk <laughs> we just walked away well you're yeah. in, you were interesting you had mm-hmm. a lot of interesting things to say about God. the guys and, yeah. and 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 plus the fact that i, I related so well to it yeah. and i felt like i wanted to help you mm-hmm. so Guide badly me. yeah yeah, and I was things. like, oh, it's frustrating listening because mm-hmm. I know, yet I was going through it myself, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Ways, yeah. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's but nice yeah. to support each other. It is. It's amazing. And yeah, I mean, honestly, like I was saying, I'm going to put the link of your book yeah, that'd be awesome. in the bio because Thank I you. think that there's definitely people that will be interested. And then also, yeah, I mean, in general, if, if anybody wants to know more about you, yeah. you have your YouTube, your Instagram, I mean, everything. And I feel like you're probably going to do you do a good amount on your YouTube still, right? Not here well, and there. Lately, we've just been yeah. blocked. I feel like you go through your phases, but yeah. I feel like we the- are filming this Sunday, so okay. there'll be a video coming mm-hmm. out. I think the last one we did was the kittens. Yeah, they were too cute. 
They are. You know, precious. but it's hard because YouTube goes up and down. Mm-hmm. And unless you're like really working at like Brandon, it's right. really hard. It, it is it's difficult. tough. And they change the algorithms mm-hmm. all the time. Yep. So whatever. If you guys like have questions and want to know more stuff on this. Or on her life and struggles and everything. leave it in the comments because yeah. she will... And She'll read me, them and make it'll sure give me good and ideas it'll give too. her, I saw that bug come into your face. It'll, it'll give me <laughs> ideas too, because right. if you ever come back on, mm-hmm. um, we could go into details of other things, you know, and yeah. that'd be really interesting as well.